decide to sit down so that we start our office our meeting officially just give me one minute they're just just still coming in because they are changing our seating arrangement but we are done one minute only Uh, good morning, honorable members, staff. Before we start our meeting, I will request all of us to observe a moment of silence as we did experience an unforeseen circumstances in the department by losing our acting HOD, Mr. Sipo. And uh, other members have, uh, have lost their families during uh, the month of July and even now due to the pandemic. Can we have a moment of silence? May their souls rest in peace. Amen. Good morning, Amen. honorable members. And Amen. Morning, honorable members and the support staff of the community. Safety. Uh, I also welcome the MEC of the Department of Community Safety, Honorable Faith, Ma Faith Mazibugo, and the senior management of the department. I welcome the Houteng South African Police Provincial Office, led by the Acting Provincial Commissioner, General Mutombeni. And also, let me welcome the newly Appointed head of department, Mrs. Sisulu. I thought I thought she's here. Can we see her if she's on a visual? Can we see her, her face? We don't know her. The members want to see. Her, Mrs. Sisulu, our new HOD. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Chair. I, okay. I further extend a warm welcome to all okay. councillors from the from the various chief of the police as well as senior minister. It's fine. Okay. The province is still really re reeling from the past week worst civil unrest, looting, and the damage of the property, which also resulted in the unfor unfortunate events of loss of lives. I, however, wish to commend the work done by all the law enforcement agencies in quelling the violences and the effort aid in recovering some of the goods which were looted during the unrest. The corona pandemic also brought its own challenges as law enforcement agencies had to reprioritize their limited resources to ensure enforcement and
compliance of the Disaster Management Act and lockdown restriction. The committee noted with a concern the non compliance by most of the citizens in the province who are no longer wearing masks when in public spaces, non adherence to the number of people allowed at funeral services, and the attendance of after tears gathering, which often serves as a super spread of the virus. The level of the crime in Gauteng remains high, and as a committee, we are further concerned with the constantly increasing incidence of gender-based violence. The province had aimed to reduce the crime by 50% by the end of 2020. As outlined in the Deliverology Program by the Office of the Premier, this target, this target should not be the responsibility of the subs alone. The committee note the triple mandate bestow upon municipality police department, which is a crime prevention by law enforcement and traffic law enforcement. We must strengthen collaboration and have a multidisciplinary approach so we can win the fight against crime. Honorable members and uh, councillors, we therefore so it is important as a committee to arrange this meeting so we can, amongst others, receive and assess plans from various law enforcement agencies to help each other strengthening policing effort in order to achieve a reduction of crime. In brief, this is the purpose of the meeting today. I declare the meeting officially open. Honorable members, we'll move to apologies. Is there any apologies in Tabise? While Tabise is coming, I know that the MEC will be, yeah, I see Councillor Karen Mayor, Swani. I'll note you after we have presented our apologies. Tabise? Good morning, members. Good morning, everyone present in the meeting. Uh, we only have one apology from the uh, member Numbuyo Amanamela, who is off sick. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ntabisen. I have noted MMT, Karen, then after that, Ngamla. And then after that, Brigadil in that order. Good morning, Chair. Uh, this is Karen May, MMC uh, Community Society in the city of Tswane. Uh, please excuse me at about 5 to 12, of, as I have another meeting at 12. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Noted. Ngamlang Kosi. Good, good morning, Chair. Good morning, Generals. Good morning, uh, Councillors. Uh, I'm Director Nkosi from Egur Leni. Uh, apology for the Chief of Police, Mr. Isaac Mapie. He's got a bereavement in the family. Thank you, not yet. Brigadier. Good morning, Honorable Chair. Major General Rampota speaking from the South African Police Service. Uh, Chair, I just want to put an apology for uh, our Provincial Commissioner, Lieutenant General Mawela, who's of six, and the acting uh, PC General Mtombeni is also engaged in another meeting, uh, Chair. I'll be representing the province. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, noted. Uh, thanks for those. Those are the apologies. I'm presenting them uh, for acceptance. Any mover? Member Hadebe? Thanks, Member Hadebe. Move. Any seconder? Thank you. Thanks, Member Shagalten, for seconding. Can we move, uh, honorable members? Can we move to our agenda point number three, the presentation of the annual operation performance plan? Is a. Apologies, Omri. Honorable Chair. 
Brigadier Selepe, I didn't see your hand. Nuti, yeah, you can go on, proceed. Brigadier Selepe. Uh, good morning, Chairperson. Apologies. Uh, I'm Brigadier Selepe, the provincial head for Operational Command Center. I will be asking to be excused at around one o'clock because I need to prepare for PDNCC. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you. I see Fidel. Hi, Honorable, Honorable Chair, I'd like to give an apology for MMC Mukwena from, uh, uh, from the city of Johannesburg, uh, MMC for public safety. Thank you. Are you a, are you a chair of the committee? No, ma'am, I'm, I'm the director in the office. Okay, thanks. Yeah, those apologies were all noted. Thanks for that. We are moving to agenda point number three, uh, where we are going to re uh, receive the presentation from uh, the municipality in terms of the categories which we have put them. Then the discussion will be after five municipality have presented, and I'm realizing that we might experience a problem in other municipalities. I know that Johannesburg, they just reappoint, they just reappoint the MMC, but if things go well as we have requested, we will request the plan to be presented or to be sent to our offices so that we should be able to check it. Is it do we agree, members? Agreed. Yes, thanks. Uh, the first presentation will be from the city of Swane Metro Municipality. Um, MMC, current mayor, are you the one who's going to present? Uh, Chair, no. Uh, Chief Nkomo from uh, uh, Team PD will present. Thank you very much. Okay, you can introduce the topic for for her and uh, you hand over to to Nkomo. Over to you. Uh, Chair, yes. Uh, Chief uh, Joanna Nkomo, uh, Chief of Team PD, uh, will present the annual program for the city of Tuani. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, in the midst of, of, of the meeting, I have my support uh, staff and I have Shaman Sutil who will take us through the presentation. Thank you, Shaman. Um, thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you, General. Um, so this presentation is just a, an extract of our annual policing plan. Um, and hopefully we will cover everything. Um, if not, we can answer during the question session. So just an index of the presentation, um, just a short introduction, vision and mission of the department, um, our city profile, and then um, patterns and trends relevant to our core functions, and um, so, uh, extract from the City of Chwani Customer Satisfaction Survey, our workforce profile as relates to our operational personnel, um, fleet status, our budget, and then our performance indicators. Okay, um, just a brief introduction. The TMPD was established during um, 2002, and as the Honorable Chairperson stated, we have the three legislated um, functions of our department. So the 2021-22 annual policing plan is aimed at covering our operational and governance interventions and also to see how we integrate these interventions in terms of um, strategic initiatives of the city, um, intergovernmental relations and um, commitments, as well as our executive mayor's 10-point um, plan. Um, as incorporated and aligned um, with the 2021-2620 IDP. Um, so the vision and mission of the TMPD, um, our vision is to provide a high level professional and community relevant policing service. And the mission is to ensure a city where citizens are and feel safe and secure. Um, just a broad overview of the uh, city of Chwani. 
Um, obviously, we are category A municipality. And during 2008, um, the former Metsuiding district municipality was merged into Chwane. Um, Chwane has a very large land area, um, exceeding 6,000 square kilometers, which does place a, a lot of demand for services due to such a, um, a large area. The city is divided into seven regions with 107 wards. In terms of the Metro Police, we have offices in all regions, um, and in some of the regions we've established sectors. So we might have two or three sectors within a region, um, de depending on the resources that were availed um, in that regard. Okay, um, as regards our patterns and trends, in terms of traffic law enforcement, I've, I've just given an extract um, of some of the statistics in our annual plan. Um, this graph just outlines um, the main accident areas. Um, for instance, Solomon Machlangu Drive, the R55 Road, WF and Como, Steve Biko, um, Samaya Avenue, Lunwood Road, N1 Freeway, Khashfontein Road, Pretoria Street, and Eskim Patlele Drive um, in a northerly direction and Van der Rohf Road um, are our main accident road hotspots. In terms of um, patterns and trends relevant to crime prevention, we've just provided an overview of how the SAP stations relate to the city of Chwani regions. So in uh, region one correlates with the Soshan Guve, Ritgat, Mabupani, Luate, Pretoria North, Harukua, Dube, Acacia, SAPs, Precincts. Our region two is Hammondskral, Temba, and Sinneville. Region three, Hercules, Pretoria, West, Attridgeville, Sunnyside, Valeria, Pretoria, Moort, and so forth. I don't want to bore the committee, so, um, but I think that just gives an overview of how it correlates. And using the SAPS statistics, we're able to get a broad overview of the crime situation in the city of Chwane. Um, I think if one looks at the crime statistics, um, things that emerge as concerns is the increase in the number of sexual offences and rape in the city, especially if we look over a five-year period. So rape, for instance, has increased by more than um, 300 cases over the last five years. Um, sexual offences has also increased. Um, by more than 400 cases. So um, these, these are concerning issues um, in the city. Um, carjacking, I, I think it, it's typical of Gauteng that property crimes are um, quite a major issue. Um, as relates to crime detected by police action, there's been an increase in terms of the illegal possession of firearms and ammunition. But we know that that's a difficult crime category because we're never sure, you know, it could just reflect an increase in the amount of operations being done by um, the police service. Um, but the, also there's been an increase in sexual offences by police action. So I think it definitely speaks to, to the, the calls um, regarding gender-based violence in the country. Okay, as relates to bylaw enforcement, um, most of the bylaws uh, notices that are issued are for traffic related bylaws, as well as our public amenities, public order bylaws, um, the Business Act, as well as um, street trading bylaws. There has also been an increase in solid waste. Um, our, our executive mayor is running quite a strong campaign aimed at illegal dumping in the city. Okay, um, in terms of our customer satisfaction survey, um, the survey was, the last survey report was of 2018. Um, the city has recently done the survey again. We're just um, awaiting the data analysis and the publication of the report. Um, but based on the 2018 survey, they, um, they score it from a level of one to 10 
with one being extremely dissatisfied and 10 being extremely satisfied. So as relates to crime prevention, bylaw policing and traffic and road policing and interaction with TNPD, um, the scores are about five, which just um, indicates average. So there's definitely improvements that need to be made. And then as relates to safety and a people's perception of safety, um, there's a lot of concerns of the inner city at night. Um, the score there was only 4.78. Um, inner city during the day, 5.61. And the neighborhood at night was 5.75. In terms of living in Chwani, um, traveling by taxi, the neighborhoods during the day, private transport, public transport, um, the scores there were much better. Um, the public also feels quite safe visiting City of Chwani facilities and visiting Chwani pay points as well as customer care centres. So that definitely speaks to the role that municipal facilities can play in terms of enhancing safety perceptions in the city. In terms of our organisational structure, the last approved structure was of 2019. Um, we, we are in the process of revising our structure, but it is, it is quite a lengthy process. Um, and on the 2019 structure, we have um, five divisions, regional policing, specialised policing, training and innovation, support and administration, and asset protection service. Okay, in terms of our workforce profile, I've just taken an extract um, out of our annual policing plan just relating to our police members. Um, and this is excluding our administrative support staff, such as secretaries and admin officers and capturers and so forth. So on the structure, um, we have 3,386 posts. Um, due to our large intake, of constables, we are over strength in that regard. Um, so in terms of warm bodies, we have 3,909 officers in total. Um, uh, we do have a lot of vacancies um, in supervision levels within the department um, and our vacancies um, total 1,530 as relates to operational posts. Just a broad overview of our vehicles. Um, we have 923 vehicles, most of them are owned. And um, at the time of compiling the annual policing plan, we had 540 functional vehicles and 386 um, non-functional vehicles. In terms of our budget um, for the 2021-22 financial year, um, the OPEX budget of the department was about 2.4 billion rand. 90% um, of that budget is on salaries. Um, for our CAPEX allocation, um, we have 21.5 million rand. Um, I think it's also noteworthy just to note that there is a rebasing of the budget underway. Um, but at the time of reporting, this is um, our, the budget that was approved. In terms of our CAPEX budget allocation, um, it is quite a small allocation. Most of it will be prioritised for traffic law and equipment, um, such as speed cameras um, for our road policing function. Okay. For our departmental performance indicators, as from our approved um, departmental SDBIP, which um, feeds into the IDP um, of the city, we have our targets broken up into different divisions. So um, we have the targets for regional policing, and those relate to the number of regional road policing operations and interventions. And the target for the forthcoming year is 362 regional road policing operations. Then we have 298 by regional bylaw policing op, um, operations, 484 
um, regional crime prevention operations. And then there's a target to attend to complaints within 48 hours. I think it's just noteworthy that obviously when we look at the performance scorecard, um, these operations are obviously interlinked with other interventions such as Ukai Malau and G-Leaf and so forth. Um, but for the purposes of the city's um, performance management system, the targets are phrased in a generic manner. As relates to specialized policing, um, there are the specialized um, road policing operations, um, 436 is the target, and um, then 201 bylaw policing operations, 1,100 crime prevention operations. Um, the reason for the high targeted specialized policing is because we do have specialized units such as um, task teams that focus on cable theft issues within the city and so forth. Um, and then they also specialized policing division also has a target of attending to complaints within 48 hours. In terms of our social crime prevention function, we have the number of Metro Police Educational Awareness Intervention groups. The target is 268. Um, 120 scholar control training programs, 130 school outreach programs. Um, uh, then, in terms of land invasion, we have a target for 100% um, response to land invasion within 48 hours on council property, and 10,080 um, patrols of vacant municipal land. And also 100% um, of demolishing of illegal structures on properties as per court order within 14 days. I think we all know that you can only demolish with a court order once the property is occupied. Um, in terms of our governance issues, um, we have a target of 100% um, for civil claims investigated and coordinated. Um, that is coordinated with our group legal department of the city. Then um, percentage of disciplinary cases investigated and concluded within three months. In terms of our training and innovation division, there are targets for the number of training modules presented, tactical and advanced driver training, uh, tactical and advanced training courses, and the number of dri driver training courses presented as well as the percentage of corporate and external training courses coordinated. So um, this last target would relate to courses such as ma management courses, um, courses on Municipal Finance Management Act and so forth, which go a bit beyond the policing environment. In terms of our mayor's 10-point plan, we have some new indicators as well. Um, the one is on the number of illegal dumping operations to be conducted per quarter, um, the number of cable theft operations per quarter, and the percentage of acceptable notices received. And that relates to our section, 60, uh, um, our section 56 notices, which we are monitoring in terms of um, seeing that they're of good quality and aren't withdrawn and that they get processed through the court system. Thank you, Chair. Thanks for the presentation. Members, you'll note whatever you want to ask, uh, it will be done later. Can we move to the city of Egrulen Metro Municipality presentation on their plan? Ekurleni, who's presenting? Ndatenkosi, is it you presenting the Ekurleni one? Thank you, Chair. Yes, it's me. Uh, the MMC wanted to have a wait. I don't know. I just called the, him now. He said he, he wants to get into the meeting. I don't know whether he is connected before I start with my presentation. Morning, yeah, morning, it's, it's, morning, Chair. Morning, Chair. My, my apology. It was a technical error. My sincere apology. This is an MMC Moko Chair. 
um, MMC for Community Safety from the city of Ekuruleni. May I take this opportunity to thank yourself uh, for having invited us to be part of the stakeholder, or stakeholder so that we can then share from our side, from, but as well as uh, uh, eating from the palm of the meeting. I would introduce U Director Nkosi, standing in for both the Chief of Police and the Deputy Chief for Operations to run the presentation on behalf of the city. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, MMC. Uh, Director Ngozi, you may proceed. Thank you, thank you, MMC. Thank you, Chair. I don't know, I don't, I don't see the presentation flighted. Can I have proceed? You yes, we um, have you submitted. I'm informed that it was submitted, but can I proceed with what I've got here? Yes, but we are requesting you to flag it, uh, Director. Uh, I, would, uh, I would like to apologize, Chair. I thought the person, the coordinator, was uh, given a copy that would be flighted. Uh, that was arranged yesterday. I'm just not sure. Uh, if not so, I will request that uh, we, we will send the presentation at a later stage. Can I continue? Uh, we are trying to load it. I can see You can it, proceed. Yes. Okay, I can see it, Chair. Oh, thanks very much, Chair. Thanks for the opportunity. Thanks, MMCs. Thanks. Uh, I would like to thank the um, PC or the acting PC. Um, like I said, the chief of police uh, is not is not in. I was requested to represent him. What we did is we took an extract of our annual plan that was submitted to the PC, and we just highlighted some few issues that we that 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 uh, that was requested by the committee. Can we go to the next slide? Our, our, our next slide talks talks about our vision, our mission statement and vision that we, the vision is to contribute to a safer, smart and creative developmental city through innovative and effective policing, SEMBD. The mission is being proactive and innovative, serving with honor and integrity and through partnership with diverse community will, um, we we'll strive to improve the quality of life of our people by enforcing the law enforcement without fear and favor, reducing actual crime and fear uh, um, and the fear thereof, preserving peace and safeguarding the lives property of our lives. Uh, the values. Uh, we say EMPD is driven by a set of shared common values that are acknowledged and pursued by every member of the service. We subscribe to the following values. That is reverence to the law, integrity and honesty dignity, respect for our clients, professionalism, and fairness in execution of our work, leadership and teamwork, dedication to service. As we all know that um, as uh, Egorland Metro Police Department, we are mandated by the South African Police uh, Service Act 68 of 1995 to perform the three core functions that we were requested to present on. That is traffic law enforcement, by law enforcement and crime prevention. By law enforcement, a critical element of uh, our urban regulations and management. The department uh, values to active pers um, pursue citizen compliance through dedicated awareness campaigns and target operations. EMPD plays an integral uh, role in general law enforcement in conjunction with a number of stakeholders, such as the South African Police Services, National Department of Transport, the Road Traffic Management, Corporation, Road Traffic Infringement Agency, RTIA, to mention just a few. The above mentioned strategic relationships have been visible through joint operations, uh, operational interventions. We can go to the next slide. Uh, it talks about our core functions of um, the, our core function, that is traffic law enforcement. Traffic law enforcement is conducted. We conduct uh, traffic law enforcement to minimize uh, serious and fatal road traffic accidents. Uh, we do it due, um, 
through selective law enforcement in and we conduct uh, where we're conducting uh, selective law enforcement at hotspots to ensure compliance to traffic rules. Uh, traffic management at all times to promote free flow of traffic, um, especially when there's load shading, accident scenes, that is when we do traffic management uh, in terms of tra um, point duties. We also conduct awareness campaigns to educate communities on the rules of the road. When we, when we go to bylaw enforcement, we enforce it um, in partnership with other city of Egoland departments and other law enforcement agencies because we, to ensure compliance, we have what we call by law and uh, enforcement in uh, integrated by law enforcement that take place on a regular basis with the city of Egoland departments to address various by law contraventions uh, because the situation differs from time to time. Chair, I must mention that when people talk about by law enforcement, they only think of metropolis. There are various um, by law uh, contraventions which are taking place uh, that reside with other departments. We, as EMPD, we assist them in enforcing those laws. Um, EMPD comments on the application of trading permits and August licenses, which are issued by the city's Department of Economic Development and Houting Liga Board. So when people are applying for permits, EMPD is playing an in integral part to, to, to comment. And then we also prevent illegal land invasion and complete unoccupied uh, units. If you can look at this it, in Clayville, Chief Albert Lutuli and Palm Ridge, what happens is we are assisting our human settlement department because once uh, houses were uh, are built, before those those houses are, are issued to the people, there are people that just go into the houses um, who are illegal. Then we assist in in removing them or in uh, policing that they they don't they don't uh, get those houses. Uh, it becomes a problem. Then under crime prevention, we've got planned operations that are conducted at different hot uh, crime hotspots to detect and minimize crime levels in the city. High visibility patrol is another deterrent in preventing the crime. Integrated crime prevention takes place with other law enforcement agencies such as um, SAPS, Gauteng uh, Community Safety, Traffic, SARS, Home Affairs, RTMC, and private security companies who assist us in a great deal. Uh, we also conduct awareness campaign to educate communities and provide safety tips. The next slide. What we've done on the next slide, we've just um, flighted the our fourth quarter, um, our fourth quarter uh, interventions. Um, as you can see there in April, under traffic law enforcement, that is the performance that we have. In April, you can see, you can notice that uh, those are the fines issued and the amounts that are reflected on. I'm not going to waste time on the amounts. We can all see them. And then um, that is under traffic law enforcement. You can also, you'll realize also the reckless and negligent driving note and um, during the month of April, May, June, and yeah, and June. As I said, we're presenting only on the on the fourth quarter what we've done. Under by law enforcement, in the next slide, what we presented, like I said, is an extract. We did not want to give all, I mean, uh, uh, most details that we actually have, we just took an extract. What we what we indicated here is our the number of uh, bylaw interventions. I mean the number of planned operations of bylaws in April, May, June. We had um, planned 60. I mean we have planned those numbers. The next column it reflects the numbers that we've done, and then the the liquor operations. That is where we had a handful during the time of the lockdown at different levels because certain um, hawker, um, certain um, traders were taking chances to to sell alcohol during uh, the lockdown lockdown times those at, uh, took most of our times and uh, most of the most of the bylaws that we we were doing here it's um the illegal uh, land invasion that is taking place mostly in our northern area if we go to the next slide, we presented a, the crime prevention. Um, 
inter interventions. Those were the those are the feedback of what we've done for the month of April, May, June. Then we've got the, the last column, which is totals of what we've we, we've achieved. The next slide. During the month of July, we all know that uh, there was looting. So the, what is reflected here is what we've uh, done from the 16th, um, I mean, from the 11th to the 16th. We had 32 malls that were vandalized and looted. We have uh, uh, five garages looted and vandalized, and we had seven of our EMPD officers who were injured, and uh, five of EMS members who were injured. In the process, uh, we had one officer that was was fatally, um, I mean, shot, and we had to bury him. We had uh, seven EMPD vehicles that were damaged, one EMS vehicle that was damaged, and we had three private uh, vehicles that were damaged in our council pro, uh, uh, premises. Uh, I also have to mention that, uh, I don't know whether it is also mentioned here, that we lost one of our members with the operation of, of the illegal mine. Uh, illegal mining that was shot at. So that is the number of the total arrest. During that period, we had about 290 arrests. Um, it, oh, we also reflected the hijacked vehicles. We, we, they recovered uh, firearms, unlicensed firearms, and other arrests during the month of uh, July. And the imported vehicles, the number is 11. If you can go to the next slide. So that only reflects that was the the arrest of the people that were, were were looting the malls. Can we go to the next slide? Okay, what we said here, yeah, we've got a, a risk or challenges. Uh, the duration of the of the training of the metro basic training of the metro police officers it, it it's, it's a risk or a challenge to us because now it takes three years. By the time students come out of college, uh, I'm sure they they'll be tired and we would have lost a, a, a lot of what we call let lot of service and to add on that we at the moment we lost about 32 officers due to covid and there's a, a very big vacuum that needs to be to be to be um to be closed we also the lack of training on crowd management and technical skill skills as soon as we get those training up and running we'll be able to sufficiently do our our functions and then we the insufficient fleet, the service turnaround time when we took our when we take our vehicles for services they take long. Obviously, we've got the, the budget constraints, and the mode of transport that is the use of soft and hard top vehicles in violent situations. Uh, it's also a challenge to us. Lack of storage facilities that is when we confiscate some of the goods. We don't normally confiscate goods, so. We only confiscate when there is an uh, when there is a need. It's a last resort. Uh, lack of bulletproof vests and crowd management gear, which is actually needed mostly nowadays because of the of the violent uh, situation that is taking place in our area. Of course, the shortage of staff. The shortage of staff is causing us to work long hours, which is we identify as a risk for for us. Next slide. Thank you, Chair. Those are just a summary of what we what we have, but all the information is is included in the in the feedback that we provide to the provincial commissioner. Thank you. Chair. Sorry, okay. Chair. Sorry, Chair, but I think there could be 
uh, two people sitting in the same venue and, and all their laptops are off. So maybe if one then um, um, reduces uh, their micro, it will help. Yes, Thanks. we have done that. Sorry for that. Just everyone needs to mute the class. We are still sorting. Jefferson, uh, the acting chief of police, uh, NG. Mukaz will be making the presentation on behalf of the Johannesburg Metropolitan Department. But as earlier been indicated, the MMC for Public Safety, MMC Bukwena, uh, is uh, not in the meeting uh, because of other council business. But uh, Mukwena will be making the presentation on behalf of JMPD, Acting Chief of Police. Thank you. Good morning, uh, Honourable Chair, the MMC is present, and the Chief of Police, including our Acting Provincial Commissioner. Basically, the purpose of the presentation is to brief the Portfolio Committee on of sa Community Safety with reference to the 2021-2022 Annual Operational Plan by GMPD. And um, I also indicate to the Honorable Chair that our uh, annual policing plan was submitted to the PC, approved and signed off on the 20th of July. The presentation contents will speak to our mandate, vision and mission, strategic objectives, a strategic approach of JMPD, our budget, KPIs in line with the 2021-2022 SDBIP, our service standards, daily operational plans, major operations, our anti-corruption awareness campaign, and security. I'll then go straight to our mandate as Johannesburg Metro Police Department. We are responsible for road, tra road traffic policing, bylaw enforcement, and crime prevention, with also the support rendered by our soft uh, our, our support services to the municipal court. Our vision and mission is to ensure a universal sense of safety and security. Our mission being through the formation and partnership with the broader community, all policing agencies and other forums create a safe and secure environment for the optimum functioning of all stakeholders within the uh, Johannesburg metro region by the provision of professional road policing, bylaw enforcement, and crime prevention service. Chairperson, our strategic objective in line with the departmental mandate, uh, JMPD strategic objectives is obviously crafted in line with our 2040 GDS, prevent and reduce crime, increase the level of compliance to bylaws with respect to land invasion, street trading, waste management, electricity, and advertising through integrated multi-agency intervention, increase the level of compliance to traffic regulation, and improve traffic management through integrated multi-agency intervention, empower communities through awareness programs, by providing information as it pertains to road safety, bylaw compliance, and crime prevention, create the support and collaboration between JMPD and its stakeholders, introduce control to deter and detect acts of fraud and corruption. Our strategic priority and deliverables to make Johannesburg a safer city Hence, the direction of JMPD is informed by the key long-term strategies of national, provincial, local government, and operational agenda priorities that are aligned to growth and development strategy and the Johannesburg City Safety Strategy. Okay. 
JMPD's uh, strategic approach, key focus areas and desired results. Our first key focus area, strengthening bylaw enforcement for a well-regulated and functional city. Activities, amongst others, is roll out reliable and constant enforcement efforts being proactive and, and reactive. Strengthen municipal bylaw courts Establish rapid land invasion unit that was established last year, which is currently having 100 uh, uh, officers. Joint operations also conducted with our group forensic and investigating unit. The desired results, a, redu a reduction in bylaw contravention leading towards a bylaw compliant city, a complete effective justice system, integrated bylaw enforcement center. The second one will be ensuring safe transport, transport and mobility through traffic management, enforcement and education, build public confidence and awareness through road safety initiative, engineering environment and emergency care, improve our licensing programs. Our desired result is safe mobility, improve confidence in the greater use of public transport. The third one being the crime reduction, intensify capacity. We have uh, in the past years recruited 1,500 officers. Uh, we are still uh, training the 100, uh, 415 officers that we're expecting to pass out in September. Develop regional crime reduction plans based on reliable and relevant data that we uh, receiving from our SAPS, improve police presence with targeted focus areas that are responsive to the top crimes within the regions, improve police response presence through our visible uh, patrols, our desired um, results seeing a re reduction in crime and the fear of crime, and also to uh, attract investment within the city of Johannesburg. When we look into our, our budget, the regulation relevant to municipal uh, police service, especially regulations two in bracket D, indicates that a municipal council has the financial resources and its at its disposal to establish and maintain the municipal police service. For this financial year, Jefferson, our budget is four billion five hundred and twenty-five million. 377,000. The operational budget being 33 million, and um, the CAPEX budget with being over 4 billion. Our key performance indicators in line with our SDPIP intensify crime prevention and bylaw enforcement. Key performance indicator, number of bylaw enforcement operations in the city. Our baseline being 270, target being 560. You can see divided into quarters, uh, first, second, third, and fourth quarter accumulative. Our key intervention, bylaw enforcement joint operations, focusing on illegal waste management, illegal advertising, illegal, trading, illegal connection, land invasion and enforcement of COVID-19 uh, uh, recently. Number of drug and seizure operations, our baseline being 42, target for 2021-22, it's 95, accumulative. Uh, in terms of a uh, key intervention, organized drug rates, stop and searches, strengthen a specialized unit being our K9 unit, and also enforcing the COVID-19 regulations. The percentage, the percentage of, of wards with what uh, based policing programs, our baseline being 80%, our target for 2021, 22 being um, 100%, key intervention, deployment of officers per ward, establishment of forums to strengthen relations with the role players, and also including our, our uh, COVID-19 enforcement program. The second one is improve traffic management and licensing service. 
number of traffic enforcement operations in the city, our baseline being 2,900, target for 2021-2022, 6,400. Key interventions, uh, road blocks, roadside checks. Uh, you can see Jefferson accumulative divided into the four quarters. And then percentage in road, the reduction of road fatalities, our baseline being 3%. Target for 2021-2022, 4 through our roadblocks, roadside checks, and awareness campaigns. Chairperson, when you look into our service standards, our core services, by law enforcement, response to infringement within 24 hours, target is 100%. Accident report availability within 24 hours of accident lock, 100%. Traffic control, 90% response to all lock calls for traffic control within 30 minutes. Our target is 100%. Uh, this slide uh, speaks to the back background, uh, Chair, Honorable Chair, on our annual operational plan. Uh, JMPD is currently using what based policing mod model, which serves as the mechani mechanism used to implement crime prevention, bylaw enforcement, and traffic enforcement. What we are we're doing currently, we are aligning our resources uh, to where we have problems, uh, supported also by our specialized uh, unit, as well as other uh, entities within the city that we normally refer to as the Jobek 10 plus. JMPD also conducts the roadblocks uh, enforcing curfew. Um, the action plans that are outlined, outlining all daily duties to be conducted by officers across their regions, including monitoring parks, roadside checks, COVID-19 operation, crime prevention roadblocks, land invasion, illegal connections of electricity, water, monitoring the protest, liquor outlets, and places of entertainment, funerals, and uh, all identified super spreading events. The interventions that we have put in place currently a uh, chairperson to monitor the funerals, we on daily basis, daily basis uh, being uh, given as JMPD, um, all the funerals that are expected within all our, our symmetries. And we deploy officers in the gates and we make sure that every, every, every funeral that accesses our premises, it's 50, not 50 plus. JMPD also participate in Operation Kimulao Roadblocks under the leadership of our Gauteng Provincial Commissioner. There is also a district um, Operation Kimulao that uh, we also participate on. Over and above that, JMPD is having its own regional um, uh, joint Operation Kimulao and are conducted five times a week, rotating within all the regions. This slide, uh, Chairperson, basically outlines our day-to-day -day operations that are conducted and deployment. I'll then go straight to our major operations uh, that started from uh, uh, July 2021 that are ending June 2022. Uh, for the first quarter, our focus, uh, the month of August, which is our Women's Month, we are participating in joint operations with SAPS, Southern Traffic Police, National uh, Traffic Police, our CRAM within the city, October being a transport month, focusing on uh, public transport, transportation. Uh, these are the stakeholders that are, are participating in those operations. The second and third quarter, which is our November, December, and January, our same festive season programs. Um, the third and fourth quarter, which is our March and April Easter plan. Um, here, our interventions are aligning on, on activities that are planned on a drive, a reducing fat, a road fatalities, including a driver's fitness. The slides are not showing. Are they not showing? No, I can see from my side. They're showing on my side too. From my side, ma'am, I can see. Okay, thank you, thank you, Chairperson. Um, the slide um, speaks to the anti-corruption awareness campaign that are conducted 
Yeah, we do have a special unit, which is our internal affairs that are working closely with our outreach, uh, community outreach uh, uh, stakeholders, including uh, within the city of Johannesburg, where we are doing activities amongst others in anti-corruption awareness campaign, your, 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 your G, GPV campaigns. Uh, this is basically as per a weekly operations and, and, and are targeted on the hotspots as per the information that you get from our subs. The next slide, as we all are aware that we do have a security services within the city of Johannesburg. Uh, uh, the key performance area is to minimize any risk or loss of property and life on council premises, to guard all council premises, to conduct risk assessment in all the council premises, and also conduct security awareness campaign. Uh, basically, that is our presentation as MPG. Thank you, Chairperson. And Chairperson, am I still audible? Sorry, ma'am, you are audible. Thank you, Mr. Gobert. Yeah, you. Are you done? We are done with Jobek. We are moving to M Fuleni. Chairperson. Chairperson, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, I'm actually using the phone. We're having a problem of 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 connecting. Can I proceed, Chairperson? Yes, you can proceed. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, good morning, Chairperson. Greetings to the MEC, the MMCs, the acting PC, and I would like to observe the protocol. My name is Tapelo Mullo. I'm responsible for traffic, um, traffic and security uh, services in Amfulin. Chairperson, um, we've sent you, oh, thank you very much. I can see that now you flighted uh, our slides. Chairperson? Yes, you can proceed. Thank you very much. Uh, Chairperson, the, the request we received from yourself was that uh, you were looking for the plans and uh, you were very specific in terms of what we're looking for. You wanted our plans uh, uh, on, on bylaw uh, uh, services or function. You also wanted our plans on our traffic management and plans on, 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 on crime prevention. Unfortunately, on bylaw, uh, uh, functions, we could not uh, uh, provide anything because a bylaw unit in Mfudem, it's a standalone uh, department. So this presentation that I'm going to give on our plans is, uh, is, is focusing on traffic management as well as the crime prevention activities. Yeah. Can we move to slide number two, Chairperson, so that I Thank you. For what we've done, we've just given the, the background. Um, well, but what is important on this background is that, um, and that I would like the committee to, to take note, is that uh, no budget allocation has, has been made for all the activities that I'm going to, to present. Um, there's a problem of funding. I think, I think the, 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 the committee is also aware of of, of our situation in Fuleni. 
in in terms of um, um, in terms of in terms of uh, uh, funds. Can we move to the next slide, uh, Chairperson? Yeah, we started with the crime prevention. Uh, you can move to another slide. Okay, thank you. This one. Yeah, we're just giving the background uh, that uh, the local uh, the local government is a sphere of government that is very close to the communities, and our councillors have the responsibility of ensuring that the needs of our communities are are, are serviced. Um, the point point number two. Uh, there's a white paper on local government that requires municipalities to develop a greater responsibility for local safety and security. Because crime occurs in specific places and it's often linked to experiences in, in a local context. Civil society and organization at local municipalities are elements of safety and security. Can we move to another slide, uh, Chaps? We also here mentioned that the unit the crime prevention unit will embark, if that's point number three, will embark on priorities that requires zero budget and joint activities led by stakeholders to ensure that municipality continues to play a role in a crime prevention. It is important to mention, uh, Chairperson, that um, uh, just before we move to that slide, but it is important for, for me to mention to you that uh, um, since the establishment of our since the establishment of our um, uh, social crime prevention unit, uh, we've never had funding from the municipality for the activities that are taking place. And we've relied um, hugely on, 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 on um, a, a provincial community safety department, which has been very, very helpful in terms of ensuring that the programs that we, we, we have are able to are able to 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 to, to materialize. Can you move to another slide? Thank you. Uh, now, okay. okay. Sorry for that, Chairperson. Chairperson, these our priority programs that we have. The first one, uh, we have a community involvement in safety. If that is our key performance area. We've listed here the activity, the, the KPI, and we've got the outcome, we've got the target that we're targeting all our communities in Mfuleni. We've also given the dates and also cited the lead department for this key performance area, which is our community involvement. Um, we've got a community safety forum technical support and we do have session, we conduct uh, workshops um, with a very limited staff. What we've done, what we've done, we've appointed, because we've got three regions in our area, we've appointed uh, a, a personnel, each uh, one person. Are you still on? Still on. If it's not there, allow me members and the stakeholders to jump. The presenter, it seems he's having a problem because he has said to us that he's using a phone. Maybe there's a challenge with regard to connectivity. Can we move to Midval? I'm not sure whether they are in the meeting. They didn't confirm that they are attending. I think we are done. We are done with uh, the first group. 
We am now going to note the hands for the discussion based on the presentation. Presentation from the four municipalities. I'll note hand. I've already seen member Shackleton send. I don't know from the side of that, those that they attend in visual. Can you repeat that? I didn't hear that. Yeah, I'm starting first with the members. Yes, my end is up. I've noted I member Shackleton. Member Kovas. Member Malobani. Member Kanile. In that order. Thank you so much, Chairperson, for the opportunity. I've just got uh, yeah, a question for Twane, a question for Ikuru Leni, and uh, just a remark on Mfuleni. Uh, regarding Twane, in our last Community Safety Committee meeting, uh, we did see that uh, there, were, there were no uh, fatalities of uh, security personnel in Twane in the violent unrest. And Twane was able to limit the violent unrest to only one particular area of Twine seemingly, which appears to be Mam Mamalodi. Uh, I'd, I'd like to, you know, firstly applaud Twine on that, but then to ask whether uh, Ma'am, we are struggling to hear the honorable member. I'm not sure if I'm the only one. Me too. We can't, we can't hear him. Member Kowas is not audible. Madam Chair, I think we lost uh, Member Shackleton. I saw that in the lane's mic was yeah, could have so, uh, so, uh, Also, uh, what can be done to improve the turnaround time of when vehicles go in for service? Uh, it's, uh, it was raised specifically by Ikuroleni that there is a problem with the turnaround time of vehicles when they do go in for service. But I think we do see that this is a problem across the whole of Gauteng for Metro Police vehicles and even, even for SAPS vehicles. Uh, but because Ikuroleni raised that maybe if we do get some proposed solutions, we can take it up as a, as a province and see how, uh, what we can do to, to assist there. And then a question which I think is interlinked with what Infoleni said, in fact, but Ikuroleni mentioned um, having resource challenges. And uh, I think province should put pressure to address those resource challenges. Uh, and perhaps we can even look into, I'm not saying that this will happen, but it's just a suggestion. Maybe we can look into how, as a province, funding could be provided to municipalities to assist with their safety challenges in, in due course. So we have, for example, the chairperson of Scopi here with us who, who might even tell us that uh, community safety could potentially be termed an unfunded mandate. When you look at municipalities being told that they have to provide safety, but funding isn't nece necessarily there. And in terms of the violent unrest uh, and looking at the challenges of both Ikuroleni and then Infoleni seems to be even worse when they say there is no budget allocation for, for activities. And I think that is extremely concerning. And perhaps our committee, we can we can write to Cogta or we can insist that the uh, political leadership in Infoleni writes to Cogta to ensure that there is funding because certainly the safety of the people of Gauteng and of Infoleni uh, is, um, is top priority. And even this committee after our last meeting where we went for an oversight where there, where there was major damage to malls uh, and properties and people's livelihoods and ATMs and so on and so forth. That was in the Val region itself. Uh, thank you so much, Chair, for the opportunity. Thank you, Member Shackleton. Yeah. Member Hoffman. Madam Chair, thank you very much. Uh, welcome to everybody and welcome to yourself as well. 
thank you for the opportunity. Um, firstly, I want to say that I'm not too happy by the presentations that I've seen. Um, the TMPD's one was uh, uh, the best one of the three. I know that there's a lot of challenges that um, these uh, members are facing. Um, I get, we can see from, from their presentations. The story is the same. There is, they are not adequately uh, protected, uh, trained, and they do not have the necessary um, equipment to, to, to do their jobs. I think as a legislature, it is not only our function, but it is also um, for us as members a priority to see that that happens and must happen. Um, furthermore, Madam Chair, if we do not strengthen um, these members, um, the safety of Gauteng is at risk, uh, total risk. Um, I furthermore would like to state that in the in the last few days with the unrest or uh, in the last few weeks with the unrest we have seen where our uh, pitfalls are where um, there is problems and i think one of the members here i think it was tmb d said that they do not get the necessary training uh, for public unrest so these officers go out, and we've seen it in the loss of life. They go out, um, they get to the scene, and they get there with uh, ammunition, sharp point ammunition, and they can do nothing. They can't even protect themselves. Otherwise, uh, the full might of the law uh, falls down on, on these members and not on the looters. They burn the vehicles, and those members stand idly by, and they can do nothing. Not because they are useless, but because uh, our laws are against our uh, against our members. So we lose vehicles, we lose lives, and um, on social media you see videos uh, get sent around where these members are made out to be, um, and, or, or where they are laughed at, uh, where people think that these members can't do their jobs, and that is not in every case necessarily um, the the right opinion because these members are hampered by laws that we are supposed to make to strengthen them so madam speaker uh, madam chair uh, that is problematic for me and um, the last point that i want to make is in a question that i sent through to uh, the mec honorable member uh, faith masimbuku i asked uh, the loss of firearms and I was actually astonished at how many firearms and ammunitions have been lost in the last three years. Uh, with that being said, Madam Chair, I think we should have a serious look at maybe chipping these firearms, putting a chip in. I know there is uh, the technology on the market and that technology can help us to ascertain uh, where the member members is. Um, how their firearms are being used, and in the case of a lost firearm, to recover these firearms. I think we, at this stage, and with the new uh, proposal of, of the Firearm uh, Act, I think we should firstly be responsible in uh, chipping our uh, police officers and uh, safety members uh, firearms to see where these firearms are being taken to, how they are being used, and then also when they are being lost to recover it. So that is my two cents on, on the issue, Madam Chair. I would like furthermore to, to see more uh, engagements with, with these other um, stakeholders and also get, get reports, full reports from them. Um, I think this is uh, maybe the second time or third time that we had a report. Um, but I think uh, for us to do our oversight, it is imperative that we do more and see more uh, from, from these members and, and these instances. So thank you, Madam Chair. I really appreciate. Thank you. Thanks, Member Hoffman. Uh, member Nkosi Maloban. No, thank you very much. Uh, Honorable Chairperson, 
And let me thank. Member Maloba. I don't think it's. I don't. Am I audible? Yes. Can you show your camera if possible? I don't like showing my camera anyway, but I will uh, show my my face later. Uh, I will, oh, by the way, we are stakeholders. I'm sorry, Chair. Um, what I want to say, Chair, is that um, let me thank the, 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 the presenters who made those presentations to, to us as as, as, uh, as members of the committee. And I think uh, they put a lot of effort in making sure that they satisfy uh, us and, 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 the, and the stakeholders. But I think I've got a few questions that I want to, to raise with the presentation because there's been a lot of emphasis on issues of bylaw enforcement. Uh, as well as um, issues on uh, uh, fighting fighting crime. So the first question, the question that I want to 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 ask Chair is, um, you know, in terms of bylaw enforcement, uh, having uh, as a as, as a citizen that frequents Johannesburg because I stay there but also visit uh, Twane and Egurulene on a regular basis. I must say that, uh, you know, when you hear from uh, senior officials presenting about bylaw enforcement and you experience what I'm experiencing on the ground, I wonder if you've got the same understanding of what bylaw enforcement means. Chair, you know, there is lending all over the place, particularly in Johannesburg, it seems there is no one who cares how to, uh, in terms of responding when there is land invasion. I mean, um, N12 is infested uh, with, with, with uh, and Golden Highway is infested with shacks, new shacks, by the way, as well as the uh, Fernachen Old, uh, Old Fernachen Road is infested with a lot of shacks. Um, and you phone a thousand times to Johannesburg Metro, no one responds. And you could see that there's an effort from the side of Johannesburg Metro of making sure that those people spend more than 72 hours before they respond. So when they say bylaw enforcement, enforcement, are they? Referring to and which one? It, it, if you look at, at uh, the bylaws that um, controls hawkers, you go to all our cities, the, you know, uh, or small towns, you will then realize that there's no bylaw enforcement at all. I mean, Johannesburg itself, uh, you're supposed to live about a meter in a pathway in order for people to be able to, 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 to walk, but also you need a permit for you to trade in our pathways or in our pavements. And uh, there is no enforcement at all. People trade anywhere they like, and no one will do the law. And when you put it in a plan again and again and again every year, when you know that there's nothing that you do, you don't have a system to actually check if there is a, an impact in what you have planned or in what you are actually uh, doing. So I really want to hear from the three metros in particular, because at least they've got resources. Uh, exactly when they say bylaw enforcement, uh, how do they then assess the impact of the of their job or of the of their pl uh, plans that they are implementing on a year in year, on a yearly basis, including the plans that they've just presented to to us? Uh, I could go to other areas of of of, of, of bylaws that are being undermined in our cities. You know, the the building bylaws. I know that. Building inspectors need to be involved, but they need to be assisted by metro police departments in order to enforce some of those uh, bylaws. Our parks are infested by uh, or invaded now by people about 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 ions and about plastic and about and about cardboard, you know. And no one says anything or any uh, no one do anything about it. But we hear here 
that there is something called a bylaw and it's being enforced by our 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 our, our, our officers. So I just need an, a, an explanation or a demonstration on the imp, uh, on how they assess their impact uh, when when they plan and implemented their plans. And of course, I'm I'm actually referring to the plans that they just presented to us. As far as I'm concerned, I don't think there's any bylaw enforcement from the side of our metro police department. Number two, Chair, you know, some, uh, uh, I don't know about uh, 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 but JMPD and as well as uh, TMPD, they've got units that are involved in intelligence, uh, intelligence gathering. I just want to check with the, those units were established in terms of which law, you know, uh, because I know in the mandate uh, of, 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 of the establishment of, uh, or the mandate of the Metro Police uh, Department is clear. It's triple mandate. But I just want to find out exactly who mandated them to be involved in in in, 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 in intelligent uh, gathering and sometimes even getting involved in the arrest and beating up of people who are actually seen. I'm not saying it's wrong. Maybe it's right to beat people from uh, as per their mandate that they've got, but maybe it's important for them to then indicate which law exactly. Eba kunyas are good establish such ama such such units. Number three, the other issue that I want to raise is it's good that we enforce um, uh, security, but my observation, particularly in Johannesburg. Of, of, of security, there's trouble. There is no guarding of our properties. There is lot of break-ins in our store, in our in our in, in our properties now. It means they are not being properly managed. Those security uh, guards that are responsible for protecting our. I can even take you to places. I, I, I mean, we don't do after the. I mean, etc. etc. So it is in that terms of it when because. Before, when it was private security company, you then kill them or make them pay if there has been break-ins uh, and, and things have been stolen. But now that we have been sourced, it seems, uh, but also there was proper management because the management was coming from the side of the metro police of, of, of those private companies. And at the moment, nothing is actually happening. No one is managing, uh, managing um, them at the moment. The issue of, of, of traffic um, management, as well as um, road um, uh, fatalities. You know, this in this way, he, he shut down, he, he locked down, sorry. Every time uh, the, 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 there is a, a certain level of, 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 uh, of lockdown, you see that he, he road carnages, uh, but as soon as uh, the lockdown is being adjusted, to level uh, to a certain level, then immediately the, there is a spike in terms of, uh, of, of 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 road fatalities. Again, I would like to know through what have been presented to us, how do we then assess? Because it will be important that we need to say last year were 20 fatalities, and through this plan, we intend to uh, reduce it to. Box. Okay. Through this plan, we intend to reduce like this. So again, it's about the demonstration of the impact, uh, of, of the assessment of the impact. I want to know how do we do that, particularly the, the, the pedestrian safety in our road. The last one is the issue of corruption. Communicating uh, the communication lines in your, in, your, in your vehicles doesn't necessarily mean uh, there is, a, there, there is work done in terms of addressing corruption. We all know that um, our glorified uh, police, uh, traffic officers, are actually involved in wrongdoing on a, on a daily basis. Go and, and I think this committee must also join some of the road uh, roadblocks unannounced. Then you see what I'm actually uh, talking about. Or what we also need to do is to look at the possibility of engaging uh, mystery shoppers who will also be able to uh, assist us to catch those that are involved in wrongdoing in terms of, of, of corruption. So putting a, a, a hotline or a complaint line is actually not really addressing issues of 
of, of, of corruption. And I think Metro Police Departments are beginning to regress in terms of crime fighting in our in our in, in our province. And my request, Chair, is that we really need to get a strategy, a combined strategy of Metro Police together with SAPS and also other traffic office uh, of, uh, traffic uh, traffic departments uh, like how uh, uh, traffic, etc., etc. That they must actually present to us how exactly are they assisting each other to fight crime in this uh, in this uh, in this province as opposed to um, okay, I don't want to use that word, but I actually want to say let's then make sure that there is a demonstration by our law enforcement agencies that we are working together in order to 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 fight crime in our in in our province, and of course. This is how we're monitoring it on a daily basis. And these are the results we think we will get. And at the end of the financial year, we want to then see the results. The issue of resources, I think uh, Member Kobas has spoken about, about that. But this thing of us being referred to, there's no resources, there's no resources. I think next time, we want them to actually present to us and say, we have requested 20 cars from the city of Johannesburg, city of Tuane, city of Egurulene, and it has been declined. I think it is important that such a demonstration need to be need to be made. We have requested a thousand officers, and it, and here's the proof that in our budget this was the request, and it has been uh, it has been declined. We should not be told told about uh, um, resources that have not been requested or submitted to the budget office. Uh, of, of different metros, and then thereafter, when things are not happening, then we're told about lack of resources. Thank you very much. Thank you, Member. Member Nkosi Malavan. Uh, can we request Member Kanyile? Thank you, Chair. I hope I hope mine is off as well. Uh, thank you, Chair. Let me. Uh, I, I can't show my video because I'm with. I'm here next to you, so you can see me. There's a problem with my video, but you can see me because I'm just next to you, a chair in the venue, <laughs> uh, and looking at Mr. Sh Honorable Shackleton, but it's fine. Uh, chair, the, the first, let me just say that the problem I have is I have so many questions, and I'm just worried about your time. Maybe some of them could be responded to in writing, because I think it's important that we get honest responses rather than uh, of the CAF responses. Uh, but also to say that uh, the questions I'm going to ask are also relevant to the next uh, scheduled speaker. So it means if they present, they can respond to them, or if you agree, all of them can be submitted in writing. So the first question is, I, I didn't get a sense that uh, the, this thing called the community safety forums are being taken seriously. I know in the past we used to get reports that uh, Mfuleni has a, an effective community safety forum. There's been problems in Johannesburg, in Egurleni, it was understood differently. Uh, in Tuane, we told that it was effective, but at regional level, that is at some stage. I just wanted to get a sense, can we not today can we get a report on the functionality of the community safety forums, particularly also emphasizing the important role or capacity to coordinate the communities or to ensure that participation of communities is prioritized? That's the first one, Chair. Because if we were, if we were to get answers here, then it's other presentations I can so it's going to be another thing. The next thing, Chair, is that uh, one seems to get a sense 
that uh, there are plans, and I think Mfulen is one example, but they don't get a sense of what is the budget. Mfulen has confirmed they don't have a budget, but I'm worried, how do you have a plan when you don't have a budget? <laughs> it's a problem, but we are told that they are assisted by the Department of Community Safety Trouting. How do these plans, that's the question I'm asking, are these plans linked to the IDPs? Because in my understanding is that if anything is not linked to an IDP, it might not be budgeted for in the municipality. So I just wanted to get a sense on that. The third thing, Chair, are some of the things that members have asked, but I just want to take a different angle. This coordination of the three areas of the mandate, some refer to it the first one is about crime prevention. Some are saying it's social crime prevention. Others are saying it's crime prevention. Uh, maybe at some stage we'll get to understand if there's a difference. But the point I want to make, Chair, is that on crime prevention, I'm glad that the number of the reports says they do work together with the South African Police Services, which is a good thing. Uh, and, but the question is that... Uh, these crime prevention strategies or plans, uh, how are they, how, you need a coordination. Uh, if these plans are not coordinated, you'll have a problem. In other words, there should be coordination with the SAPS and all other relevant law enforcement agencies. So the question is, I know that some of them have reported, but we need to be sure if there is proper coordination <coughs> with the SAPS, because if we don't have, then it's a problem. It relates mainly to what I think Ekuruleni and, and Jobek have reported on this, that they have done some work around com monitoring compliance with COVID-19 regulations. But the problem, this seems to be uh, plans that are on roadblocks and those kind, or when there's an unrest. One doesn't get a sense that there are plans to, uh, if you go to the townships, the Tanakin Stockfell, he to the Puzutwalagos, the shippings, it's a buzz. Uh, I was in my township over the weekend, there was a funeral, there was an after tears. I thought the president said there was no after tears, but he found there was a lot of it. Was, what was worse? was people shooting guns. I mean, the, 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 this gun side is a problem. So the question I'm asking, Chair, is that are our MPDs and, the, and also the traffic, the, the local traffic, having capacity not just to do roadblocks, to go to areas like those and ensure that there's compliance with COVID-19 uh, uh, regulations? Related to the triple mandate is the question of law of, of, of traffic law enforcement. I think uh, a number of members have asked the question, but I just want to take a different angle. There are targets that have been set around uh, pedestrian fatalities, yes, on pedestrian fatalities. And we, I know that you always engage the Department, department Community Safety about the target and most of the time, there's a problem with meeting the target. And the question you keep on asking, why is there no coordination with the other traffic uh, agencies like the Metro Police and also maybe the National Traffic Police? Because I would suspect that it should be the target that is set and be implemented by all. So I just want to see if there's coordination in that regard. The last one related to the mandate, um, because there are three mandates. The last mandate is about bylaw enforcement. Uh, I just want to get a sense. In the past, we were told that uh, in addition to each municipality ensuring uh, compliance with its own bylaws, there is also a coordination that is done with the police. I think it's called GLIF Houting Law Enforcement Agency Forum. Uh, I just want to find out if that forum is still active and is it still effective in ensuring that uh, there's coordination in bylaw enforcement. My other question, Chair, is about, I think some of some of us have raised it about uh, resources. You see, uh, 
Jobek has reported on a program that I thought there was an agreement that we must all try and see that we implement at a municipal level, which is what they call the 10 plus policy. And I think they've explained, so I won't go into detail what it is. And I think that we must congratulate them for that. But the question is, what stops the other municipalities from, I'm talking the metros because I know it's a difficulty with local municipalities, so I don't expect local municipalities to respond to this. What stops the other two metros to focus on that? Because uh, I think in Eguruleni at some stage, we're told they've got what they call wardens. We're told originally they were supposed to be focusing in each ward, but then they were tend to be traffic uh, in pedestrian crossings and all that and funerals. So I just want to get a sense. It was this 10 plus policing strategy seems to be, to be the way to go. The next question, Chair, is about the Jobek has reported on municipal courts. I'm not expecting them to respond here, but maybe they can submit a report later. Can they just give us a sense of how effective are these municipal courts in ensuring that there's, this, that there's effective pilot enforcement? When I say effective, it means giving us in states, basically. That's what it is. Then, Chair, the, there is something called a as if you look at Gauteng, Gauteng does not necessarily have rural areas, but it has peri-urban areas. So I would think that in Swane, areas like uh, Broncos Bay, those areas, Amans Kral, I think, I'm not sure, uh, Ekuruleni, maybe Bopinoni, North and that, Sidi Bay in Fuleni, it's most of the areas. So I want to find out, we have a, a, a rural safety strategy uh, do they find it easy to implement in those areas to implement this? Is this rural safety strategy relevant for the implementation of money policing in those in those areas? And lastly, Chair, I think the matter has been covered because it's about MFUL and it's a worrying situation that they've got a plan, but they don't have budget. I mean, what's the point? You you don't put a plan for on something you you can you can implement, and I'm glad that on, uh, the MEC for community safety is uh, were told they are assisting. But at some stage, maybe she will respond to say what are the difficulties. I hear the, the suggestions about Cocta, but I'm, I think the important thing is that there is already some assistance, and I would suspect that community safety is having a problem with that. Maybe there's a, there's a last point I want to raise, Chair, and. Up, Maybe it's a point that can, that they no. I'll raise it when the SAPS reports. Let me stop there. Thank you very much. Thank, thanks, Member Kanile. Member Hadebe. Thank you, Chairperson. Good day, Chairperson, and everyone. The staff, all protocol observe. I would like to know that I agree with the sentiment and question questions raised by uh, Member Shackleton. However, I have the following clarity-seeking question to the Ekuruleni Municipalities Community Safety Department. What are the limitations of the Ekuruleni Community Safety Department where bylaws are concerned? And then the second one goes to all the regions. With regards to the personal development plan, what plans do you currently have in place to empower our members of the policing unit? And is there a way they can be prioritized looking at how criminals have no fear of working into police station with the purpose to kill however, to kill however is on duty in order to steal their firearms and ammunition? And Another one, Chairperson, I don't know whether it's relevant now or I must wait for the department to do their presentation. On weekend, I was um, driving, going home. There, there were a uh, highlights that were, were following me. So I did not stop because of, I thought those people were going to hijack me. They followed me until at my place. I asked them, who are you guys? They said to me, we are the policemen. 
They were wearing uniform, but with uh, driving unbranded vehicle. So my question will be, when is the department or the police uh, officers going to brand those cars? Because it's been long. I've been seeing all the, the 4 by 4 vehicles not branded. And it's not safe to be stopped by those cars. Thank you. Thanks, Member Khadebe. Uh, MMCs and uh, the support staff from their office, you did hear the questions which were raised by the members with regard to the presentation. I'm going to request uh, that each municipality to just highlight on two minutes on some on some of the issues which have been raised and the others we are requesting that they should be responded officially in black and white sent to our offices so that the committee will sit down after getting a summary which has been segregated by the our researcher in terms of how the municipalities are going to handle it. Then within your response, I hear that uh, in your presentation, you did not highlight to us how are you going to address the issue of crime in the hotspot identified in your different areas. The Captain Park area, the Hillbro area, the Sunnyside area, those are the uh, most areas which everyone knows that if you go to Sunnyside car, MMC current car mayor, you know that your handbag will be taken without even uh, in front of the police. Then if we can be, get the information on how, how, how do you envisage to address those issues? And uh, the other thing, uh, members and uh, the stakeholders, I want to find out with regard to the SDDPIP, SDPIP, uh, uh, in terms of the quarterly numbers highlighted, is it for purpose of reporting or the municipality are able to reach those targets? And what are the impact on those targeted achieved at the end of the quarter? Is there any improvement in those different areas in terms of the regions identified? Then let me request, uh, I'll start with Chwane, MMC Karen, only, only two minutes. Then we move to Jobek, two minutes. Igor Leni, two minutes. Then with regard to Mfulen members, of the committee. The reason for us to have a hybrid is for us to accommodate those municipalities who have challenge of connect connectivity. We thought that they will be with us in the venue of the meeting, knowing that we know that in that area there's a lot of challenge with regard to connectivity. But to our surprise, we are still experiencing the same thing that we can't get the information which the committee want to, to get from Mfulen, so that we request the, the department to be able to intervene and give us the report regularly quarterly. Thanks. Over to you, MMC Karen. If you are still uh, thank around. Thank you, uh, yes, I sticked around because I wanted to to see uh, to listen to the questions. Uh, first of all, Chair, uh, we couldn't hear some of the members. Uh, mics went off, so we couldn't hear all the questions. I would really like it in writing. Uh, as far as questions for Tim, we want to see your face, Karen. We don't know you. Can you see me now, um, Chair? I can I, see I you. Think uh, what I would like to answer is a few a, a few of the things that I'm going to mention now uh, latched on to some of the questions raised by members. I think the first of all is the Community Safety Forum. Um, that is one very crucial aspect that I think all municipalities need to look at. We just approved 
a, 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 a new um, a structure, basically, not a structure, what's the right word I'm looking for, um, a term of, term of reference uh, for community safety forms, because we do believe it doesn't work properly. Uh, uh, in Gauteng specifically. And I think that's one thing that we just approved in our uh, MICO. And I, I'm willing to share that document with the other municipalities to have a look and see if you can incorporate that as well. We truly believe this new uh, term of reference for community safety forms will uh, assist all uh, 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 metropolis um, regions. Uh, or uh, um, municipalities. Uh, secondly, as far as the question is concerned about uh, ward-based metropolis, uh, we cannot do that. It is just not viable. We do not have enough offices in Swanee, so we have uh, uh, done a new strategic framework for metropolis, which basically boils down to regionalization to bring uh, the the TMPD closer to the members of of, of the city, and um, we've seen some successes as far as that is concerned. And latched onto that is satellite offices. And you mentioned uh, chair the issue of Sunnyside, for instance. Um, we are launching a satellite office within the next month in the CBD area, where we allocate at least 100 TMPD offices just in that area. And the whole idea is the whole the British. Bobby on the beach, where they assist members, they're on the street, they're walking, they, uh, um, they, they, they are there. So I think that's one thing that we are uh, trying to, to extend as far as possible throughout the city is more satellite offices. And then the last thing is the rural safety plan. We are currently busy. That's also a very crucial aspect of that's not been addressed as far as Gauteng safety is concerned in general, that needs more uh, uh, attention. And that is something uh, that rural safety plan will be, will come to make also within the next month. Uh, I'm sorry, Chair, my two minutes is extremely short. I hope I've, I've answered some of the questions, um, but I would really like to see uh, some of the questions by the members raised in writing so we can sufficient time to respond. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman Sigara. Can we go to Ekruleni, MMC Moko? Thank you very much, uh, Chair. And uh, yeah, we have noted the questions. Some of them we will try and respond to them uh, formally, like uh, Honorable. The face, uh, you want to see your face? <laughs> Camera? Um. Yes, here I am, ma'am. Um, it's yes, actually a thanks, very hectic thanks. day for me. I'm coming from the roadblock. Thank you. Yeah, I was saying some of the questions will try and respond to them formally, but just to run quickly on some of the issues that we have noted. Uh, we have noted the concern on the capacity and efficiency on bylaw enforcement. Look, uh, without necessarily trying to blow um, um, a trumpet, I, I, I regard uh, Ekuruleni as one of the best in terms of um, anti-land invasion policy. Um, we, we had, you know, suppressed the, the, the intentions and the attempts to much lower levels. That, that, that remains outstanding. We, however, remain weak uh, on general policy. Definitely true. Thank you very no, much. That's true. Thank you very much. We, we remain weak, uh, I must admit, uh, on general uh, policing on every bylaw that you can think of. And I think that can be attributed to the strength. What we have done, we undertook a study to say, in terms of the police community ratio, where are we? And, and we have since established that um, it is quite very, very low. And, 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 and the, the consequences of such would be that we would not match this thing talk to talk. But what we are doing is uh, we have launched a localized version of Okaimolau, which we call Operation Kurula. It is an integrated way of um, fighting, pushing back lawlessness. And we are careful not to say crime, but lawlessness. So, so, so be it illegal occupation or invasion of buildings, uh, illegal stealing of electricity and, and so forth. We want all the you know, sister departments to come on board, join this operation as EMPD led. That will identify all sorts of lawlessness, including 
your 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 undocumented foreigners because as EMPD we do not have the capacity to really you know identify who is legally here who's not so from time to time we would want to call immigration officials and I'm particularly raising deliberately raising this uh, because if you do not attend to this it actually promotes you know influx of foreigners in our cities and the next thing the cities are taken over. On the issue of uh, unmarked vehicles, uh, Honorable Hatebe, um, um, it's quite technical for me to respond because I do not really know the nature of that alteration, but it is a common knowledge that in, in, in a policing environment, you will find some of these vehicles uh, that are serving a particular purpose. And, and for that, they would not be marked, you know, so that they are not easily identifiable but um, as to what they would have been doing why following you have they suspected something but i think you must just be at peace with the fact that some of these vehicles are not marked hence criminals take advantage of it sometimes they have their vehicles fitted with blue lights with police uniform and you will mistake them for being the police but the reason why some of the fleet is not marked is such that they will uh, offer a particular purpose. Let me just address the issue of resources as I take back my seat. Maybe this matter, um, um, we really have to be honest about it. Maybe have set aside a day where we can debate it without necessarily suspecting if the departments are not doing enough in terms of uh, um, 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 aligning their request with IDP of the city. Or maybe we are trying, it's just that we are not strong enough. The recent looting have actually taught us so many, so much lessons. For all the time, one, one, one was convinced that we are not a military state, but the recent lootings have actually, you know, raised a lot of weaknesses that for you to have a formidable Metropolis Department that would ensure safety and security of its people, that will protect the investment of the city, that will make sure that uh, uh, the road network is properly policed and so that the population also does not go out of order in terms of the bylaws. You got to support it financially. And, 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 and I think we should start from uh, the upcoming budget adjustment and the next uh, full cycle budget. That this thing of having your police uh, fleet uh, not sufficient, police stacked in one vehicle, especially during the time of pandemic. Um, this thing of your armory strength being weakened. Um, I'm, I'm not even sure if this thing had dragged for four or five weeks, we would have managed, you know. This thing of not having sufficient special vehicle uh, uh, vehicles uh, so that you can properly police uh, situations that we are coming from. It really needs us to come together and say every municipality, every metro, do we really think that uh, we will be ready should the same thing happen? Um, I, I did, did not want us to be defensive when it comes to resources, but I also do not expect honorable members to condemn us because we are just being honest. We need to come together and say, because municipalities are preoccupied with issues of basic service delivery, and that's where the chunk of the budget goes to. MMC uh, Moko, your two minutes is gone. You remember you I said much. that some of the, you, the, the questions, you need to respond them more officially in black and white. Can you summarize? In summary, Chair, we really um, uh, welcome the invite, like I'm saying, particularly the questions that are coming from the floor. Uh, it might not be something that we normally get from uh, at the level of the oversight, at the level of the municipalities. They actually comprehend what we are getting on the ground and they will make us to become better departments tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Uh City of Johannesburg, I know the MMC is not here. Who was the presenter? Can you respond two minutes?
All right, thank you, Chairperson. The presenter was uh, the Chief of Police, uh, Angie Mukwena. I think she's still uh, uh, in the system here. Uh, she will respond. And uh, yeah. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. With regards to the issue around uh, uh, intelligence, uh, JMPD doesn't have an uh, intelligence unit. We don't deal with intelligence. However, we do work jointly with our uh, subs department uh, uh, on joint operations. Um, with regards to the issue of uh, land invasion, um, it's true that as the city, we have lost the battle against the land invasion. Uh, however, we have come up with some interventions. We have established the land invasion unit. We have also created a land invasion hotline where people, as and when they see people invading land, they do call. And then we've got a response team that is operating 24 hours. Uh, regarding the, uh, the fatalities, uh, Honorable Chair, as the city of Johannesburg for the, the previous financial year, we had a minus um, 1.38%, percent, meaning we for the compared to the other years, we had 434 uh, fatalities. And then for the year that has just ended, we had 228, which is minus 128. Uh, regarding the, the, the crime prevention strategy, indeed, we are participating in the monthly meetings with JG Live, uh, which is Housing Law Enforcement uh, Agencies Forum. Uh, amongst other uh, committees that are sitting chat there, it's uh, including the counterfeit goods, bed buildings and fatalities. Um, as a city, indeed, when we dealt with the issue around um, a, a COVID, uh, our city department, which is DED, during COVID, they issued, there was a process of application of people for them to be issued with permit, uh, for them to be trading within the city, and that on its own created a problem for us as a city. However, we are in constant communication with the relevant departments on uh, uh, resolving the matter because uh, everybody within the city of that is trading within the CBD is actually having a valid permit that was issued by our DED uh, uh, department. Uh, the insourcing of security chairperson will address that in writing. We do have uh, indeed challenges around there. There was no proper feasibility study that was conducted on the project. It was just done and, and now it has created a problem. And when you look into our alignment into the IDP, indeed, uh, our strategies are aligned to our SDBIP. Uh, so it is informed by uh, our interventions are indeed informed by our IDP. I think I will end there, Chairperson. Or oh, regarding the Hillbro uh, area, Chairperson, um, we have a dedicated team. However, we're still going to intensify uh, our CCTV coverage. We are in a process of a, a CCTV installation within those areas, and we are working jointly with SAPS on issues around uh, crime prevention in Hillbro. Uh, I think my two minutes has ended. Thank you, Chairperson. All the other uh, questions will be addressed in writing to the committee. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. But you didn't show us your face. Thanks for the first group of the presentation. We are moving. Oh, thank you. Thank you. We can see you. I need to say something about him. Come to school, man. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, ma'am. Uh, can we move to 3.6? We will allow the following set of the municipality together with the department to uh, the Houghton Subs and the Office of the MEC to present. We'll start first with the Rand West local municipality. And uh, I understand it's MMC JJ who will do the presentation for us on behalf of the Rand West. If I'm right, is MMC JJ in the, in the meeting? No, I'm, I'm in the meeting, Chair. Thanks, uh, 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 Chair. Uh, Chair, I think Chief Mampondo is, is, is the one who will do presentation on our behalf. Yeah, Rebata, one of photos, JJ. Then you will introduce your person who will be doing the presentation for us. Kiabonala, ah. Chair. Reabonanta, Tehante. Okay, thanks, Chair. 
Uh, 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 I think Chief Mampanda will do uh, General Otemo uh, Miti. Um, good day, Chair. Good day, Chair. Can you hear me? Good day. You can proceed. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson, the MEC and Acting PC and Honorable Members of the Committee. Um, I'm not sure as to, am I going to be assisted with the flighting of the, uh, the, the presentation? Hello, Chair. Yes, we are, we are, we are, we are uploading it for you. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chair. I would uh, immediately start with the, the brief overview of the uh, Randwes City Local Municipality. Okay. Chairperson, the Randwest Local Municipality emanated from the merger of the two elsewhere municipalities, that is namely your Ranfantin then Ranfantin Local Municipality and the Western Area Local Municipality that was in 2016. And the Rand West Municipality, it has a, a population of um, plus minus 261,000 in, 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 in total. We have 35 wards in the city with uh, 69 um, councillors. In terms of the workforce in the fraternity, we have plus minus 50 traffic officers, inclusive of your senior management, and um, 11 <clears throat> traffic, uh, traffic wardens would uh, obviously be assisting with the point duties and uh, the bylaws and, and, and so forth. And the previous speakers alluded to the fact that uh, in terms of the mandate, it is derived from the National Road Traffic Act, Act 93 of 1996, and your Criminal Procedure Act of 51 of uh, 1977, and inclusive of your National Land uh, Transport Act, uh, 5 of uh, 2009. And obviously, in terms of uh, our vision is to serve and uh, uh, protect our communities in terms of our mission to to ensure that Rand West City local municipality is area is free and and safe and and secured. Just quickly on our core function, uh, Chairperson. Obviously, in terms of the the pieces of legislation, our core function is traffic management. And uh, by law enforcement and the crime crime prevention. In terms of security, um, the security was uh, was outsourced. Currently, we have a, um, a service provider that is obviously guarding the municipalities' buildings and and and, and so forth. On traffic management issues, we endeavor to work in an in integrated uh, manner with other uh, law enforcement agencies. Obviously, your South African Police Services, the, uh, the Department of Immigration, your Houting uh, 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 Traffic Police, um, 
in the in the area. And obviously, in terms of your bylaw enforcement, we also have our own, you know, um, op operations apart from the integrated operations where we would uh, um, be, be working, you know, closely, particularly in this particular area with uh, your, your 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 police in terms of um, you know uh, dealing with the. Uh, uh, the issues of uh, cable thefts and uh, your illegal occupation of land and your visitation in terms of the, the scrapyards and your crime prevention. Also, we endeavor to um, work in an integrated uh, manner um, with the law, other agencies, law enforcement agencies, um, including um, uh, SAPS and uh, the um, uh, colleagues from the Department of, uh, of community, community, sa uh, uh, community Safety. I must hasten to say, um, Chairperson and honor Honorable Members, that the city, Randwa City, we are still grappling with issues of uh, placement. Um, almost four, four years down the line, and we are almost uh, five years in this, in this marriage. Um, we are still also grappling with the issue of the, 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 the structure that is, you know, it's not yet adopted by, by the municipality. And uh, you would uh, recall that when we, we meshed, there was a chief uh, responsible for Western Area, you know, a, a, a local municipality and your Ranfantin local municipality. And uh, um, we're still having uh, two centers of, 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 of power between, between the two chiefs and the fact that uh, the uh, municipality is still grappling with the, the issues of, of placement. Our area, in terms of law enforcement, it is uh, divided into two regions, um, region A and uh, region B, that will be your Ran Ranfantin region and your Western area region, so that we are also able to um, uh, deploy, you know, uh, uh, even so. The area obviously situated around your West Rand uh, district, uh, municip uh, municipality, and obviously it's an area that is situated around your mining area in particular, um, where obviously we've seen a number of uh, mines closing down, and uh, that's creating a serious challenge for, for, for us in terms of the uh, illegal mining, you know, uh, due to the closure of uh, 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 mines. Um, you know, those uh, uh, Zamazamas that would uh, always refer, refer to. And uh, that had in itself impacted negatively so on the, um, the issues of cable theft um, in, in particular around the, the, your, your Western area region in particular, because that's where uh, a lot of mines you know, are, are situated. Now, I've indicated the, um, the vastness in terms of the population of the, uh, the, uh, our area. But I must mention that the merger of these two municipalities did not assist us a great deal because at the time of the merger, Ranfantin was having an old or aged um, a fleet of vehicles, and uh, your Elswal West, Western Area Municipality had also, you know, um, was also, you know, limited in terms of the vehicle that they had. They had also an aged ve vehicle, and uh, that's have impacted negatively in terms of the. Um, um, uh, in terms of uh, realizing 
even our 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 goals and our objective within the law enforcement uh, fraternity. At the moment, I must mention, Chairperson, that uh, last year, July, we had received um, a, a set of um, six vehicles. And <clears throat> those vehicles uh, are not, did not help us a great deal as a, as, as a department. Um, because predominantly all our vehicles are more than, you know, 10 years. And in terms of the uh, turnaround time of the, uh, the, the, the servicing, uh, I'm even afraid uh, to, to, to mention, you visit the mechanical workshop, you, you find all our traffic uh, vehicles, some of them have parked there for, for two years or, 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 or two years. And it has been... <clears throat> And outcry on our side, uh, particularly when the world and the country, you know, experience the, the issue of the, 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 the pandemic. The area or the department has two shift system. The two system, obviously, it means we are not policing the area around the clock in terms of 24. 24 hour 7. The morning shift is reporting uh, 06 to 1400 hours, and then you'll have the afternoon shift that is reporting um, 1400 hours to 2200 uh, hours. And I must hasten to say uh, this also impacts, you know, um, negatively, uh, particularly, you know. Um, most of the, the, the road carnages, they, they happen way in the early hours of the morning and when the, the, there is no one, you know, to, 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 to police and take care of the, the, the situation out there. Obviously, the measure meant that we should be given the tools of trade, which obviously, as I've mentioned, the, the issue of the the aged a, a, a fleet, it, it has created a lot, of, uh, a lot of problems. And I must indicate that our situation, it's, it's a dire situation in that uh, our budget, it's a, it's a sufficient, insufficient budget. That does not even last um, the financial term in terms of 12 months, such that the hours of uh, officers who are working, you know, during the, the weekend had to be cut. The superintendents, you know, um, over the weekends at, uh, at home. And, uh, you know, since I think 20, 2019, we've been grappling with the issues of the assistant also superintendents, you know, um, being unable also uh, to monitor and supervise over the weekend because of uh, budgetary con con constraints. Our department is not uh, privileged like uh, your metropolitan municipalities with the uh, uh, specialized units. I must uh, um, indicate that. Obviously, specialized unit to deal with maybe the issues of protest or uh, crowd control and um, other things that warrant our department to have a specialized specialized unit. Maybe just before I deal with the the uh, planned operational. The annual operational plan for 2021-2022. My wish, seated here, honourable chairperson, is that um, one day, if we can realise or I can realise where the three municipalities, you know, are, are meshed around your Randwest City local municipality. Uh, three municipalities, 
referring to Mohale City, your Randwe City, and uh, your Merafung, Merafung City. I'm not saying if some of the challenges that we are experience, experiencing, we won't be, exp, be experiencing. You are left with three minutes. But but would be, be able maybe to to cope under whatever the strange conditions that we are faced with. Chairperson, flight head is the annual op operational plan for 2021-2022. In terms of the dates of planned operations in July, obviously we've been grappling with the issues of enforcement for uh, disaster management. Disaster Management Act. In terms of your August, um, as it is up to the Women's Month, all of the activities are centered around your operational basadi, and uh, with all of the specific uh, key focal areas, which I'm not going to bore, bore with, bore you with. And then, in terms of the uh, September, will be concentrated on the uh, moving violations in terms of uh, zero tolerance. And October is a public month. The department will be concentrated on the passenger and the freight um, operation uh, juggernaut. And November, we have planned that we'll be ra raiding the uh, scrapyards on an integrated manner with uh, uh, um, our colleagues within the uh, police department and the driver and vehicle fitness. And uh, December, during this uh, time, we all know how busy the roads are and then will be concentrated on the driver and vehicle fitness. And uh, our operation is named Operation Tobela Umteto. And uh, January will still be continuing with the driver and vehicle fitness and February, uh, the public public transport, um, because February it's a safety safety month, where we'll also be dealing with Operation Juggernaut. And March it will be moving violations, and April, as would be hand, headed again towards the busy period in terms of the Easter long weekend it will be uh, concentrated on the driver and vehicle uh, uh, fitness. And uh, come May, it will also be an integrated um, operation in terms of uh, raiding those scrapyards because that's where the municipalities are, you know, um, road, road furniture are being sold, you know, by those who are vandalizing forever the road signs and uh, the, the theft of cable in, in the area. And uh, June, the last month of the financial year 2022 will be back again with moving violations in terms of uh, zero tolerance and uh, and the uh, uh, passenger operations. Um, I want to conclude here, uh, Chairperson. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thanks for the presentation. Then can we move to Mohali City, local municipality? I understand OMMC Anna Sisolo, Moja, on a family bereavement. I don't know who will be presenting on behalf of the office of the MMC or is the chief of police here in the meeting? Mohali City. Madam Chair, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, sorry. Uh, Madam Chair, all honorable members, um, my name is Jimmy Kiet. I'm the assistant manager for traffic. Unfortunately, our manager had a medical emergency and had to attend to that. And he didn't forward me any plans or anything to do. Um, so I don't have anything to present at this moment, but I will uh, forward you the plans then in due course when I spoke to the manager. Um, I'm very sorry about that. Okay. 
can you, can you please try to get hold of them and let them send you whatever document which they were supposed to send it to us so I've that we that. get that document? Yes, ma'am, I've tried that, but uh, like I said, my manager is in a medical office with the dentist or something, and uh, I couldn't get hold of him as well. So uh, I apologize for that. I've just been over this morning to attend the meeting with other plans. Okay, thanks. Merafu? Um, Merafu, local municipality? According to the information which we have received, uh, Mohali was Mohali City was supposed uh, uh, supposed to also present to us the part of the Merafong local municipality. And then, if the Mohali is not here and they are having those challenges, in other words, members, we will not be able to receive. Also, the Mohali local municipality presentation, but we will request them that those that they did not present to us today, when we summarize, we give the way forward, we'll be able to tell them when do you want those uh, documents because we want to analyze everything so that we should be able to do our monitoring and evaluation correctly. Uh, in absence of the two municipalities, now I will request the Houten subs, according to the information which we have received, Major General Rampota will be the one who's leading the team today in terms of the presentation. Major General Rampota, are you in the meeting? Good morning, Chair. Yes, morning. Can you hear me? Okay, thank you. Good morning, Chair. Once more, and uh, members. Honorable Chair, thank you for the opportunity to present the AOP for 2021-2022. Due to the realization of the GMA alert level regulations, Houten SAPS management converged for our annual planning session during October 2020 at Volmer Hotel and all internal management, which included uh, GPCs, provincial heads, responsible for different financial programs, all district commissioners, as well as identified station commanders participated. Our external stakeholders were also invited to attend the session being the metro, the three metros, Houghton Traffic, the provincial CPF, as well as Department of Community Safety. Honorable Chair is the joint venture. All inputs deliberated on during the planning commissions were processed and refined and included in the draft of uh, AOPs, which was circulated for additional comment and inputs. After receipt and consideration of further inputs during the drafting process, the AOP was finalized and presented to the top management for implementation as from the 1st April 2021. Although only an expert from the printed version, the presentation is quite in detail and therefore the presenter will not dwell into details, uh, uh, Honorable Chair, especially coming to activities action steps on individual performance indicators in our programs and sub uh, programs uh, section. In the spirit of Women's Month and, and Women Empowerment, with your permission, uh, Chair, the section head planning, uh, Colonel Nicole Peters, will take us through the presentation. I uh, thank you. Thanks, Major General. Can they proceed? 
Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Thank you. Honorable Chair and uh, General, and all protocol observed. We don't hear you. Okay, the, oh. we will go through the purpose of the presentation and then the AOP for the steps. Okay, thanks. Okay, the purpose is to present the SEPS AOP to the community safety committee in the legislature, and then we start with the AOP itself. We'll deal with part B and part C of the of the AOP, the strategic focus and the programs and sub programs. Part B, we talk about the demographic profile, uh, budget allocation, resource allocation, situational analysis, our strategic direction, the impact statements and outcomes, about 10 priorities, Okay, Malau, there's uh, Sona and Sopa. Then on the demographic profile, we have our three uh, metros, West Rand and City Bing district municipalities. The population is at 50 million, land surface 17,000 square kilometers, and the unemployment rate at the time, the quarterly, the third quarter 2020, was at 33.7 percent. The budget allocation for 2021-2022 is 1.4 billion rand. In the previous financial year it was 1.430 billion. Our human resources, these are the salary levels and the ranks. The total is 30,887 SAPS personnel, including our Public Service Act personnel. In the vehicles, we have 10,259 vehicles in the province. SAPS vehicles. And then we start with the situational analysis, the external environment. Uh, we start with a sustaining meaningful community participation in policing. We know that uh, as a SEPs, we cannot function alone. We need participation by the community. Uh, growing Gauteng together, that is the GGT plan, the five-year policing plan. We The plan was developed and with these 10 uh, priorities, improved quality of service, station-specific plans, improved police visibility, improved partnership policing, prol proliferation of firearms, reduced, reducing priority crimes, improved crime detection, corruption, e-policing, and improved service delivery. We also implement the commitments of the sixth administration of provincial government. And still on the external environment in terms of detection rate in Gauteng, how to improve. We talk about the um, crime scene management, quality of inspections, analysis and, and audits of our columns of the SAP-6, the identification and addressing of repeat offenders, effective utilization of informers, improving data integrity, the investigation of priority crimes identified by both the NAP joints and PROF joints, and improving public opinion and trust in the detective service. There were work sessions conducted with all detective commanders as well. In addressing gender-based violence and femicide in Gauteng, we know that GBVF is a profound human rights violation, and we have implemented these, the Gauteng Provincial GBV Response Plan, National Strategic Plan on Gender-Based Violence and Femicide, 
and we have the gender-based violence command center with an emergency line number. In terms of good governance in the internal environment in SAPS, we have the four lines of defense in order to improve good governance. The first and second line of defense is internal. Third, third line of defense is in terms of the assurance providers, internal audit and AGSA. In the fourth line of defense, we have our civilian secretariat for police and the portfolio committee on police. The impact of COVID-19 pandemic on training, we had a problem last year that our training programs had to be placed on hold due to social distancing restrictions. We did have online learning. However, we did not achieve all the targets in that regard. Then the human resource capacity in the province, we've lost 1,068 personnel during the previous financial year. Uh, during the same time, 286 reservists and 232 SAPS security guards were enlisted into the SAPS as permanent members. We also appointed 70 general workers, cleaners. The SAP strategic direction, we support the strategic direction of government, which is to create a safe and secure crime-free environment that is conducive for social and economic stability, supporting a better life for all. Then in terms of this, we have five uh, outcome statements. First one is the law upheld and enforced to underpin the stamping or asserting of the authority of the state. The thorough and responsive investigation of crime, intelligence-led policing, collaborative and consultative approach to policing, leading to a professional and capable sex. Then the priorities of the provincial commissioner, serious and violent crime, uh, the, uh, organized crime, effective implementation of the OCTA process, gender-based violence and femicide, drug and human trafficking, countermeasures to address corruption, community collaboration and participation, and serious and violent crime. We uh, uh, implemented Operation Akai Malau and continue to do so. Uh, this was endorsed by the National Commissioner. It's a multidisciplinary approach aimed at restoring the rule of law, and these are the aims and objectives. In terms of the SONA, the president stated that uh, crime and violence continues to undermine people's sense of safety and security, and that tackling crime is central to the success of our recovery. And he mentioned specifically the following crimes that hamper economic activity and discourage investment, which is cable theft, railway infrastructure, vandalism, land invasions, construction site disruptions, and attacks on truck drivers. Then in terms of gender-based violence, the president said that it is imperative that we lay claim to being a society rooted in equality and non-sexism and launched the National Strategic Plan on Gender-Based Violence in April last year. We promised to the women and children of the country that we will strengthen the criminal justice system. The minister's directions also implemented by SAPS, um, maximizing effort to reduce violent crime, enhancing policing of the illicit economy, specifically illegal mining, enhancing police and transport related crime, impacting the economy, high levels of corruption, developing the SAPS infrastructure, effective management of available human resource and physical and financial resources, reviewing the legislative framework relative to policing, improving operating procedures to address crime threats and trends, improving technology used to fight crime, and maximizing efforts to reduce violent crime. In terms of the SOPA, uh, the Premier spoke on the, uh, uh, the five-year policing plan, and uh, as well as the 50 high-performance vehicles that he was and they handed over to the SEPs on the 20th of February. To date, we did get 55 high-performance vehicles. 
We also received the 11 uh, sedans for the FCS. The, uh, the uh, Premier also mentioned that the crime has gone down from uh, by 9.6%, but that was for only for that third quarter of the 2020-2021 financial year, but spoke on the problem with uh, crimes against women and children. Then we move to programs and sub-programs. We have program one, administration, program two, visible policing, and program three, detective service in the province. Program one, administration, there's 32 indicators, which carries 36% of the, of the plan. Program two, 30 indicators with 34%, and program three, detective services, 26 indicators with 30% of the plan. This is um, just um, a summary of the outcomes, sub outcomes and outputs, as well as the number of indicators per output. Then program one, administration. The first indicator is the number of SAPS owned firearms reported as stolen and lost. The baseline is 84. That's what happened in the previous financial year. And uh, target is to reduce to 75, which is a 10% reduction. Percentage of feasibility studies finalized within 90 days. We had seven in the previous year. That target is 100% to be finalized. Percentage of fault reports attended to within the SLA time. We had 22,000 no, 695 that were finalized in the previous year. We want to um, finalize at least 90% within the prescribed time. Percentage utilization of NPIS and ICDMS, the targets are 90% and 70% each. Percentage of learners assessed and declared competent in terms of the training provisioning plan. Our target is 97% to 99.97%. In the previous year, there were 1,473 members that were competent out of the 1,475 trained. In terms of crime prevention training, uh, there were five trained. The target is, and all five were competent, 97%, 200% should be competent. Crimes committed against women and children training, the baseline was there were 100% competent, and that was 408 members trained. Target is 97 to 100% competency. Then for crime prevention, for crime investigations, also the same target. And in the previous year, 518 were trained and competent out of the 519 total trained. Percentage of employees reached through proactive EHW interventions, 23,000 members, 23,110 members with, um, reached in the previous financial year. Our target is to reach at least 40%. That number of 42,000 members include um, head office personnel as well. Provincial absenteeism tolerance rate, the sick leave, our target was is 2.75%. The national target is 3.25%. However, the provincial uh, baseline is better than the national target, which is why we still want to try and maintain that. Percentage workshop force maintained against the approved establishment. We are currently on 92.48%, which is 30,000 members, as stated in the beginning. We want to increase that to 98%. Percentage service termination submitted to National Head Office. We submitted 84% of what we've received, which was 1,271 in the previous financial year. Uh, the target for this year is at least 70%. Percentage of total vehicle fleet available for policing uh, in the previous financial year it was 77.99% overall or average, and uh, we want to increase to 85%. Uh, 
In terms of the ethics and integrity plan, that is the financial disclosures of SMS officers submitted. We have 92%, sorry, 92 SMS officers in SAPs and all were um, all submitted their financial disclosures within the time frame. The target again is 100%. The MMS offices is 277 and all submitted within the time frame. The target is 100% for this year. Percentage of financial disclosures of SEM and finance lower level personnel is 100% target and it was 100% the previous financial year as well. And then for personnel that was newly appointed who must submit within 30 days of appointment. It was 100% in the previous year and we want to maintain that 100%. Percentage of IPAD recommendations initiated within the prescribed time frame. We received 85 in the previous financial year. All were initiated within the time frame and we want to do the same in this financial year. Percentage of IPAD related cases finalized within the prescribed time frame. That was 18 and uh, target is 100%. Baseline was also 100%. Percentage of disciplinary hearings finalized within the prescribed time frame is 90% target. Uh, in the previous financial year, we had 139 total hearings and it baseline is 91.37%. Then percentage reduction in service complaints against SAPS members. The baseline is 3,176. We want to reduce by 5% to 3,017. The finalization rate of complaints against the service to be finalized within 30 days. The baseline is 82%. It was 2,622 that were finalized within the prescribed time frame, which is 30 days. And uh, the target is at least 72%. Number of incidents of unauthorized expenditure, there was zero in the previous financial year, and our target is zero again. Percentage decrease in the number of incidents of confirmed irregular expenditure, we had 14 in the previous financial year, we want to reduce by 67.5% to 5. Percentage decrease in the number of incidents of fruitless and wasteful expenditure, we had 202 in the previous year, and we want to reduce by 70% to 60. Percentage of expenditure versus budget allocation. We spent 99.68% of our budget, and we were, our target is to spend between 97 and 100%. Audits completed in terms of the approved internal audit plan. Uh, it was the baseline is 70%, so seven were completed of the 10. Target is 100%. Percentage of inspections in terms of our inspection plan, we finalized 612, which was 96%, and our target is 100%. Percentage of AXA audit reports finalized, there was and uh, analyzed and distributed. There was one received in the previous financial year. We want uh, our target is 100%. Percentage decrease in civil claims against the SAPs in the previous financial year, we had two, 2,818. Our target is to reduce by 4% to 2,705. The awareness campaigns conducted to promote the image of the SAPs, our baseline is 64 and we want to maintain 64. That was the end of program one. Then we move to program two, visible policing. And this is the, the summary of outcomes, sub outcomes and outputs, as well as number of indicators per output. Our first indicator for visible policing is the number of reported contact crimes. Our baseline was 152,260. We want to reduce by 7.48% to 140,871. Percentage reduction in the number of contact crimes at the top high crime, uh, high contact crime wage stations. There's uh, 16 stations in the province. 
Uh, baseline is 40,603. We want to reduce by 7.48%. Number of escapees from custody. We, there were 45 escapes last year. We want to decrease to 44, which is a 2% decrease. Stolen and robbed vehicles recovered. The baseline is 12,954. We want to maintain that target. Percentage reduction in the number of serious crimes. We want to reduce by 2%. Percentage reduction in the number of reported property crimes, also reduced by 2%. Percentage reduction in the number of reported contact related crimes. Also, the target is to reduce by 2%. Percentage reduction in the number of reported other serious crimes. The target is also to reduce by 2%. In terms of trio crimes, the reduction should be 7.48% as it's a contact crime. It's a continuation of trio crimes. Percentage reduction in police officials murdered on duty. We had five members murdered on duty during the previous financial year. We want to reduce by 10% to four. Percentage police station rendering victim friendly service to victims of gender based violence, 100%. We want to maintain that. Percentage reduction in the number of reported contact crimes against women. The target is to reduce by 6.9%. Percentage reduction in contact crimes against children. We want to reduce by 6.73%. In terms of reaction to complaints, Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie. For Alpha complaints, we want to maintain the 11, 11 minutes and 40 seconds, which was the baseline for last year. Bravo complaints uh, maintain the 12 minutes and 52 seconds of the previous year. And Charlie complains at 12 minutes and 22 seconds of the previous year. Percentage of police stations with functional community police forums. There were 142 out of the 143 police stations. We want to have it at 100%. Number of cities, now we're talking about the safer cities framework, where it was implemented. Our target is to implement in two stations in two cities, which is Johannesburg and Chuane. Percentage increase in the number of sexual offenses. This is in terms of uh, detected as a result of police action. We want to increase by 2% to 865. This is in terms of um, uh, prostitution. Percentage Major increase in the number of cases for Major the General Ramporta. The National Gambling Act. We Major want to General Ramporta. 262. We are requesting uh, number of stolen we are requesting. illegal firearms recovered. Hello. Our target is to increase to 311, which is a 1% increase. Number of identifiable stolen SEPs firearms. Recovered. Kennel Peters. We want to increase to 134, which is a 10% increase. Kennel Percentage Peters. of applications for new firearm licenses finalized within 120 working days. Our baseline is 53.3%. That was 25,552, which was received in the, uh, which was finalized in the Kennel, previous financial Kennel, year. Kennel Peters. And our target is to. Finalized the chair would like to speak to you. Illegal liquor outlets closed. There were 3,051 closed in the previous financial year. We want to maintain 100% of reported illegal liquor outlets closed. In terms of SAP's 13 compliance audit conducted, there was 199 conducted. The target for this financial year is 72. Peters? Percentage reduction I, in the number of firearms kept in the SAP's 13 stores at police stations. Uh, we started the year with 88,668 firearms in the stores. We want to reduce by 5% by the end of this financial year. Uh, Major General Rampota, can you request Colonel Peters to give us a highlight summary? 
because you have been allocated time and uh, she's still going on and uh, is now beyond the time which has been allocated. <laughs> Can she try to give us a highlight summary on the issues which we have requested? Thanks. <laughs> Sorry for, Sorry the, for the disturbance. Is was there a question? No question. question. We are saying that try to summarize, oh, not okay. go through word by word because we need the highlight in terms of the presentation of your APP. Please, thanks. Okay. Noted. Look at uh, Honorable Chairperson. How do I? Give me. Okay. Then we just have the peaceful crowd. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, the um, peaceful crowd management, police, incident police, and unrest crowd management. Percentage of crime related deeds reacted to, as well as profiled cargo consignments, or 100%. Then uh, program three detectives. Uh, these are the targets for detection rate, 52.77%. Contact crimes, all dockets to be reduced to 14%. Wanted persons reduced by 10%. Detection rate, target is 72.25%. Uh, detection rate for crimes against children, 67.15%. For serious crimes, 32.95%. For property-related crimes, 12.94%. For contact-related crimes, 49.1%. Other serious crimes, 33.9%. Trio crimes, 15.85%. Then our um, informers versus det uh, detectives, target is three uh, informers per detective and two informers per commissioned officer detectives. The drug syndicates and uh, arrests dealing with illicit drugs and criminal groups neutralized, target is 60%. The buccal samples to maintain 96%. Person to crime DNA investigations finalized 17% and 5.8% for crime to crime investigation leads. Fingerprints investigative leads finalized 6.7%. Uh, IBIS investigative leads finalized 13.3%. Cell phone downloads and image as well as XDS reports 100% all. 76 are submitted 58.99%. Fingerprints without results of trial, 8%. And that is the end. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you, Brigadier. Uh, we are now going to the presentation of the Houghton Department of Community Safety, MEC Mazibubo. Over to you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chair. Good afternoon to Honorable Members. Uh, Chair, I am driving. I'm trying to get out because we don't have electricity in the township. So you call me just in time as I'm trying. Now, there's also we're being inconvenienced because even the roads are blockaded in the township. It's a, also a struggle to get out. So you understand our frustration. So I won't be able to put on my video because I'm using my phone. The laptop is already uh, flat. Uh, but we have uh, MMC um, of Mohale. Anna sent me a message to say she is locked in. She just froze. I don't know how are you going to deal with that uh, uh, chair. But we have uh, the new HOD, uh, Sisulu, who will do the presentation on behalf of the department. Thank you very much, uh, chair. Uh, HOD. Uh, thank you very much, uh, MEC, and good afternoon to the chair and the committee. 
the presentation is before us. I'll just go on a high level in terms of our APP. And of course, uh, we have those four areas that we would look at, uh, but uh, I'll probably just uh, skim through the mandate, the strategic focus, our situation analysis, but importantly, our outcomes, outputs, and what the indicators there to are. Can I have the next slide, please? Just in terms of uh, where we derive our mandate from, of course, it is a constitutionally driven mandate around the monitoring of police, the oversight thereof for eff efficiency and effectiveness. We also want to promote community uh, uh, promote community police relations and uh, uh, ensure that we assess effectiveness of visible policing. And we're happy to to have seen uh, the stats on from the uh, police on what it is that they are doing around visibility uh, and, and other uh, matters relating to police. But we also want to conduct civil uh, civilian oversight and initiate and coordinate social crime prevention. I heard the MMC asking whether it's crime prevention or social crime prevention. It is social crime prevention uh, initiatives. And then we want to promote uh, community police uh, relations uh, which would be absolutely critical. You'll see those appear both in 1.1 and 1.2. But we also want to in, in, ensure that there's in for, um, in, to enforce traffic laws. Uh, there was a, 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 a question around uh, the enforcement of bylaws uh, and as well as traffic laws, so it would be important for us to all work together on that. But we also want to monitor compliance with traffic legislation and public road uh, legislation. And of course, the related traffic management is under a Schedule 4 and 5 of our constitution, which empowers uh, the provinces with, uh, with the problems with them. Um, uh concurrent uh, competencies with national government and with uh, exclusive legislative competency on specific functional areas. And of course, this is around issues of, uh, you know, which which uh, law enforcement agencies are, are responsible for which parts of, 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 of the province and uh, indeed the country uh, so that we are not uh, uh, overstepping each other's boundaries. And of course, we have all other applicable uh, policies that would be uh, tailor-made for uh, Gauteng and some of which have a national uh, interface. Can I have the next slide, please? Uh, just in terms of uh, the vision, I think we all are looking for Gauteng uh, to be a province that uh, people are and feel safe, uh, but we also wanted to ensure this through uh, the safety of Gauteng communities, and uh, we are looking for innovative ways proactively, So, uh, and we also want to ensure effective oversight and over the province's law enforcement agencies uh, and enforcement of road traffic uh, legislation uh, while empowering communities on crime prevention. It's really important on the mission part that communities are part of uh, the law enforcement of, of this country because uh, some of these crimes are happening in communities where we, where we all live. And of course, our values of honesty, excellence, accountability, respect and uh, transparency remain fundamental to our work. Can I have the next slide? In terms of program one, uh, we've just provided a, a, some strategic financial and corporate support uh, for the department, which is also uh, critical, especially as it pertains to our audits. But we also ensure that the department remains accountable to the citizens uh, in terms of oversight bodies. In program two, the provincial secretariat will give um, uh, effect to section 206 and 208 as indicated earlier in the presentation and they initiate and coordinate social crime uh, prevention initiatives and of course they also provide support and empower victims of gender-based violence and femicide as well as uh, domestic violence and vulnerable, for vulnerable groups which are women, youth, persons with disabilities as well as the elderly. Just in terms of program three, our traffic management, we talk about the integrated and coordinated traffic laws uh, enforcement to reduce road uh, fatalities. Uh, we however have seen in, in some of our data that uh, that uh, it remains an area of critical focus that we need to work on. We need to also monitor compliance with traffic legislation and public road legislation. And of course, uh, this will talk to the issues of our pedestrians crossing uh, our, our roads and, and of course the fatalities that result there, to, there from. And then we have um, to respond to reported incidents and support the South African police services on crime prevention and combating initiatives because it has to be a multi-sectoral approach and an integrated approach if we are act indeed to achieve a Houghton that is safe. I can have the next slide, please. Uh, we have a situation and that's in terms of what uh, has constituted our weaknesses, uh, what opportunities we have, and of course the, th the threats, which is a SWOT analysis of, of, of our situation. Uh, but we, we are we are clear that we, there is a political uh, will and that the legislation and the policies of our country are, are indeed useful and do give us the strength to uh, work within the sector. But also we have approved tar uh, targets and effective programs uh, from uh, the, the Gauteng uh, Law Enforcement Agency Forum structures, aiding in the coordination, which is absolutely critical. This forum becomes very important in ensuring that we are more coordinated. We also have a highly skilled and committed workforce. Uh, the corridor model, which has uh, been in, uh, now being implemented as much as it was introduced at the height of COVID, we are underway with uh, implementing this um, 
this corridor model, uh, which contributes uh, positively to the service delivery because that the corridor coordinators are in communities on the ground and have uh, a real time information of what is going on there. And of course, partnerships with other stakeholders are absolutely critical. We do, however, recognize that there are weaknesses in terms of the lack of capacity in, in the research uh, that, that we have to do, but we also uh, have a weak or non-existent uh, requisite uh, authority by the department to, to enforce and, and you know, those are the areas that we, we need to work on. That's collaboration that partnerships become important. We do have intergovernmental relations management, uh, which can be strengthened. Uh, it is, however, an area of weakness. And of course, uh, it is an ongoing discussion uh, for, for some time now, but we are uh, still uh, looking at it as of even this week. We were looking at the non-provision of 24-7 traffic law enforcement. And of course, the, the issue of programs that are planned for but are unfunded and how best we can actually share resources so that we don't have departments that are sending money back while other departments are not able to spend uh, and within the, our own uh, uh department were to ensure that we have programs that are fully funded. Uh, but we do have opportunities to implement a, a new structure and, and so that we have greater visibility uh, of police, as would the Premier would have indicated. We also establishing partnerships with business uh, so that we are not just civil society and government, but also that the private sector is on board uh, with other law enforcement agencies. We want to improve coordination and integration in the planning. Uh, by departments, and this is really an, an opportunity as much as it was a weakness, it's also an opportunity. We have uh, integrated planning that is underway. It's just the implementation thereof that needs to be ensured that it, it is effective. And then, of course, we amended uh, the amendment of the Act to give powers to enforce to this particular department. Uh, we, we are... There are, of course, uh, imminent threats that we are aware of that we have just come out of uh, in, in regarding unrest, but also the, 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 for the department more specifically that the change management uh, and change of leadership uh, uh, threats. And then, of course, uh, we are looking to see how best we can stabilize the department as we go forward. And there's uncoordinated social crime uh, interventions. Uh, so be uh, between all of uh, the civil secretariat, uh, provincial secretariat, as well as uh, the gender-based violence uh, and femicide provincial focal uh, uh, coordinator, as well as uh, the Ikaele Temba program in the department, we are looking to see how best we can become more coordinated internally, but also working with other stakeholders uh, in, with, within the province. Uh, at violent service delivery protests, of course, uh, you know, we, we've now had unrest rather than than, than those protests, but also we, we just do need to keep an eye on those as those can erupt at any time. We have a rising gender-based violence uh, uh, incidents, of course, due, is ex exacerbated by COVID-19 and uh, and various lockdown levels that we've been finding ourselves in, uh, but we they are, at least we've indicated this, there is political will, uh, especially on issues of gender-based violence, even from the president himself. So we have also rising, uh, we want to also, the issues of unemployment remain real and issues of xenophobia still need to be addressed and they remain a threat and of course we have an increase in in immigrants which all, all obviously gives rise to the issue of uh, the threat that is uh, posed by xenophobia and issues of unemployment so the last three uh, are threats that sometimes are interlinked so can we have the next slide please just in terms of the, the, the impact, uh, a safe and secure environment for our citizens that we want to create in in, in Gauteng, of course, we, we are guided by the, the National De Development Plan, as well as the Medium Term Strategic Framework, which will give us, of course, the NDP is, is up until 2030, uh, which is not long from now, we're just nine years away. And then the Medium Term Strategic Framework within the next five years, we are accountable for priority one, accountable, ethical and developmental state. Uh, of course, we know with issues of corruption, this becomes absolutely critical that we are ethical and developmental, but also a uh, capable state. The last one is obviously uh, is priority number six, which is social cohesion and safe communities uh, as it pertains to the medium term strategic framework. Uh, lastly, in terms of uh, uh, growing housing together, which is aligned to the NDP 2030, uh, we were looking at priority four around uh, uh, safety, uh, uh, safety, uh, social safety as one, uh, social cohesion as another, and food security, uh, which of course would be related to issues that uh, come from the threat which had, we had identified as unemployment. In terms of building a capable, ethical, and developmental state, of course, this aligns directly with MT, uh, with the medium term strategic framework itself. Uh, however, Houting has tailor-made uh, the, 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 the priorities to, uh, to five, and we are at number five. 
so we, we are looking uh, of obviously to have an impact around improved corporate and uh, cooperative governance, but as well as oversight of law enforcement agencies in terms of their performance. But we're also looking to ensure that we're strengthened uh, social movement against crime. Uh, we talked about this, and of course, this will include, I'll just go in this one, I'll go in a little bit more detail around empowered and safer communities, that if communities are empowered, they are also able to take charge. What we saw with the unrest is that there were communities who were able to prevent unrest and looting of malls in their respective communities. There is something to be learned from those communities because those are communities that are empowered, but there are those who were not able to do that, and we need to just look into that. But we also, uh, that will obviously speaks to a comprehensive multi-sectoral disciplinary approach, as well as support of victims of crime and vulnerable groups, as we had mentioned earlier. And then, of course, we want to increase awareness, and of course, working with SAPS and, uh, and other uh, partners, we will be, we should be able to increase awareness on safety and security uh, in, in, in schools and against the youth. And of course, we are aware of the incidents of the, the, the grade one people who was raped as well as the, the person with disability, uh, people with disability were stabbed in the school and our, uh, our corridor coordinators uh, are working uh, with, with uh, law enforcement on those issues. But it is also important that we have an institu institutionalized and internalized road safety culture, uh, in, you know, uh, so that we can improve adherence to road traffic legislation uh, by road users, uh, which is uh, MEC, who's now on the road, and myself, uh, and the rest of us. But we also need to obviously ensure that there's reduced road and pedest pedestrian fatalities, and this remains a critical concern for us in terms of the number of people who are actually killed on our roads. Can we have the next slide, please? Right. In terms of program one, uh, chair, uh, what we are looking to 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 have as an outcome, uh, we want to Im uh, improve inter uh, uh, intergovernmental and stakeholder relations uh, for integrated planning. Uh, alignment and of course budgeting and you will know if we don't uh, have that integration the budgeting for the vulnerable groups is especially falls by the wayside so we, it is really critical that we ensure that there is responsive budgeting for those sectors but we also want to ensure improved controls ethical and accountable practices uh, within the department and of course risk and inter integrity management becomes important in this regard uh, in terms of the transformation and gender mainstreaming uh, is also a critical uh, component uh, while the emancipation uh, of of, of women of 30% DSC expenditure for women owned businesses, uh, we are putting it at 50% uh, of DSC employees right now uh, are at um, our women and 50% uh, of appointed SMS members uh, are supposed to be women. And I think we're meeting this target. Uh, we are also wanting to ensure that, that the um, issues of the emancipation of youth, persons with disabilities, uh, we are, uh, our target is at 3%. Uh, for disabilities, 15% for youth, and uh, we are in the process of just ensuring we are falling short, but we are in the process of, of uh, trying to ensure that we can achieve our targets of uh, meeting the employment of persons with disabilities later in the slides will indicate uh, where we are, uh, especially when we uh, provide the quarter one report in the next week or so, we will be able to report on that uh, and how what me mechanisms we're putting in place to ensure that we are able to improve the employment of uh, persons with disabilities. Uh, and then, of course, the implementation of the GOD outreach programs become important because we also do need to have a footprint uh, within within the sectors and uh, reach out to them in, in terms of the work that we do. Uh, improve our of services as, as per the HGI targets uh, set by the province in terms of the township women, uh, persons with disabilities, youth and military veterans, uh, which we, we should also not forget. Thank you. Can I have the next slide, please? In terms of program two, it's the provincial secretariat uh, uh, chair, where we are looking to ensure the improved accountability on the performance of law enforcement uh, agencies. And this we want to conduct uh, by we want to do by conducting announced and unannounced police station visits. Uh, we know that there is particular uh, uh, focus on gender-based violence and femicide, which we will begin to be, which we will also be reporting on, and make sure that we are, have a focus as we do the, uh, the the announced and unannounced police station visits. That one of the issues that we look at is gender-based violence. But we also need to monitor performance of the 55 priority policing uh, precincts uh, that have been identified. Uh, I think at the time of setting this word 55, we're probably now at 40. Uh, but we now need to conduct assessments of uh, 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 domestic violence, of assessments on the Domestic Violence Act and the implementation thereof. In terms of uh, in the area of improved uh, coordination, we need to conduct 
court watching briefs. This has proved to be a bit of a challenge around uh, watching uh, the court proceedings because of COVID uh, and what, whether we're allowed or not. But we are looking to work with the Department of Justice as well as the NPA so that the department can continue to do its oversight work uh, uh, even within uh, the COVID um, uh, lockdown or the regulations so that they should enable uh, accountability and oversight. We do uh, will be also looking at crime dockets uh, and making sure that those are analyzed and then uh, picketing in court precincts. Uh, we need to also make sure that they're friends of the court and support victims who are in there. And we know that there was a picket in uh, in Tembisa just this past week. In the empowerment and safer communities, we want to conduct assessments of community policing forums, which we are currently underway and the uh, the corridor coordinators uh, are providing the reports on on those and we are also ensuring that our patrollers are uh, in place uh, where we might have a gap for relevant interventions but we are also uh, having looking to go to cabinet for issues of professionalization of the community policing forums and then obviously we need the, the relevant uh, capacitation uh, for for our uh, members as well as our uh, officials and our law enforcement agency we need to conduct training and engagement sessions with all safety volunteers volunteers uh, that make up part of our stakeholders in order for us to get there. And of course, the issues that are relating to schools remain um, paramount, bullying, abuse, uh, substance abuse and others, uh, or, or issues of drugs. But I think we, we also need to look at issues of just uh, uh, general uh, harassment and sexual harassment within the school environment. Uh, can we just have the next slide, please? We did look at program one uh, in terms of implementation of gender-based violence intervention and what it is that we're looking at, uh, but I just needed to just highlight the psychosocial support services, issues of sheltering, uh, coordination, and overseeing functioning functioning of uh, provincial GBV structures, and the establishment of the GBVF uh, knowledge hub uh, is is work that we would like to prioritize within program one, and and of course the adherence to road traffic legislation. We talked about that, but through we do the we do conduct crime prevention operations, including. Open Molao, uh, and we also need to conduct uh, operation in relation to public transport and learner transport, as well as uh, conduct roadblocks, uh, which uh, I know one member was indicating beyond roadblocks, what else do we do? Uh, so it's important that we also look at issues of speed, uh, issues of uh, driving under the influence and reckless and negligent driving become also very important over and above the roadblocks. But also it's important to know that the roadblocks, as part of the roadblocks, that it's it, it may be it may seem like that we need to do more than just that, but it is also important to note that issues of human trafficking uh, are also conducted by road and those are also attended to during these sessions. Uh, in terms of reduced road and pedestrian fatalities, we do conduct road safety awareness because it's really about a changing behavior. Uh, as some areas will have bridges for people to cross, but pedestrians will still choose uh, to jaywalk or even cross the highway. Can I have the next slide, please? Uh, in terms of uh, um, the, the the executive support, uh, in, we did talk about the IGR framework that was that was approved and that uh, we are we're looking to impl implement the IGR framework and also pr produce it in the year we need four reports. But in terms of improved risk management and ethical environment, we are looking to ensure that we have those reports related to those on a quarterly basis, uh, as well as the implementation of the monitoring plan regarding risk. And then internal control environment monitoring and reporting, I uh, will also have about four reports, which is a, a report per quarter. Can I have the next slide, please? Uh, financial management, uh, you know, this is a department that has essentially had uh, clean audits and even uh, our, our audit in this past in the past financial year uh, was was has was was we had really a little on, on on financial management, which speaks to the effective financial management that is currently uh, taking place in the department. But we do want to ensure that the integrated supply chain and financial management systems and processes uh, so that we can um, uh, have a, a percentage uh, which reduces irregular expenditure. 30-day uh, payment remains a, a somewhat of a challenge, and we are working with the department together with the CFO and the MEC to make sure that uh, uh, officials who are uh, contributing to the delay in payments are actually held accountable and, uh, and um, performance management issues uh, 
are brought into the fall for those who, who seem to be repeat offenders on delaying us in paying year to date reporting on financial uh, on finances in um, in accordance with our, with with sections 41b and 41 uh, C of the PFMA. So uh, we are actually ensuring that we also have annual budget that is com uh, compiled, aligned to our strategic objectives uh, uh, and, and, and make sure that we are able to uh, plan and budget for the work that we're going to do. Just in terms of SCM, we have an integrated SCM and financial management system and process in which we uh, the procurement plan is compiled, approved and submitted to the National Treasury. And of course, uh, our aim is, is to ensure that we have a approved procurement plan. Uh, we are at the end of the first quarter and in the second quarter now. So this is underway and uh, uh, in good order. Uh, in terms of our quarterly reports on irregular expenditure, we'll have a quarterly reports, uh, which will, which is our target. We have four reports on irregular expenditure. And then of course, uh, preferential procurement spend as per uh, GPG HDI targets uh, by the department. Uh, our percentage is at 30%. Uh, spend. However, we do know that the president has called for 40%, uh, but our target is still set at 30. We will, however, endeavor to do more than what is uh, uh, set. Can we have the next target, please? And uh, the last uh, two for us is that we are annually going to be looking to have 50% representation of women at SMS level on full positions in the staff establishment. We are at 50%. Uh, we would like to be a little bit more than 50% and are working to ensure that we are filling uh, a little bit more posts, at least three more posts, so that we are um, have more than 50%. Uh, in terms of the percentage representation of persons with disability as a department we set our own target as th as four percent even though dpsa would call us to set it at three percent can we have the next slide please uh, in terms of program two we have uh the 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 number of research studies that need to be conducted and we are expecting to conduct at least five of them and then we have a number of knowledge sharing initiatives we of which we have four uh, which is one each quarter and then of course we want knowledge management systems uh, to be developed and we have to have at the end of this year at least an approved concept document for this knowledge management system. It, it, it will take a little bit longer than uh, we would like, but in, in terms of uh, the knowledge management development of a system in and of itself, it does take a bit of time. So by the end of this year, uh, we should have the concept uh, underway in terms of how that knowledge management system will work. Can you have the next slide, please? In terms of law enforcement agencies, there's a sub-program monitoring and evaluation. Uh, so just to indicate here, Provincial Secretariat has a, a, a few sub-programs, and this is one of their sub-programs, monitoring and evaluation, uh, uh, which we're looking at uh, law enforcement agencies' performance uh, that is being monitored. And in terms of our annual target, we're looking to have at least two reports uh, uh, compiled on law enforcement agencies' performance. And then, of course, we have uh, want to have four quarterly reports compiled on the implementation of IPID uh, recommendations. So whatever recommendations IPID has made, we want to ensure that in Gauteng, we, we look at, uh, at at those uh, reports that are compiled and if that, that what IPID has, has recommended is being implemented by SEPS. We're also looking to have uh, quarterly reports compiled on Domestic Violence Act and the compliance there too. Uh, we also are wanting to ensure that we have uh, uh, reports compiled on the management of service delivery because oversight in its nature will require that you actually give feedback and are Account and the one of the ways in which you do account is uh, through um, you know the report the reports that we have to produce. So we 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 will do quite a bit of writing, but it also helps us in terms of um, ensuring that we have a point of reference when we are reporting on what is happening. In terms of our quarterly reports are compiled on police stations monitored, uh, that that will also uh, will be producing four reports and the number of police vehicles uh, procured. Well, we're looking to procure 45 uh, vehicles for the police to uh, uh, address the issue of shortages of uh, vehicles by the police, particularly in response to gender-based violence and femicide issues. But also we have uh, four mobile police stations that uh, we are looking to procure just to ensure that we are able to have a greater police visibility. Can I have the next slide, please? Um, we have uh, 
we have uh, some outputs and annual targets that we have set under uh, the, the, the monitoring and evaluation as well so in terms of the number of crime dockets analyzed and reported on. Uh, we're looking at at least 1,700 dockets to be analyzed and reported in this year. And of course, we want to have 10 uh, court watchings uh, that uh, can uh, can be attended. Uh, we want we, some of them, of course, uh, the, the, is, is that they're not necessarily um, recorded nor can they be watched later because of the confidential nature of of the court uh, proceedings themselves so we do sometimes have to be there physically otherwise we would actually have chosen a hybrid uh, way of watching or a virtual way of watching the briefs but we as in indicated we will engage with justice as to how best we can do that uh, even during COVID. in terms of um the the gender based number of gender based violence cases that we're going to be tracking within the criminal justice system we're looking at at least uh, tracking 600 of them uh, during this financial year and the sub program safety promotions we're looking at at least 500 social crime prevention interventions that are implemented uh, through uh, the provincial secretariat and then of course the number of school safety interventions 3000 school safety interventions uh, is what we're looking to have conducted and of course with the closing of schools and opening of schools we might have a shortfall here and there but our aim is really is to have at least 3000 of the school safety interventions conducted within this year. Can I have the next slide, please? HOD, you have been allocated 20 minutes. You are now at 30 minutes, my sister. Is that my right? HOD. I apologize. Um, let me just focus just on the annual uh, annual target. Uh, I've got one more program to go, Chair. Uh, my sincerest apology, just to indicate that for our annual target, uh, we, want, we have 12,000 GBV victims that we want to support, 142 uh, victim empowerment centres that we want to monitor, and 36 green doors that we want to roll out, none of which have been done in the first quarter, and one fully uh, resourced shelter. And then uh, the last program, uh, Chair, uh, we will go on to... Um, Traffic, uh, which we, ooh, uh, it's it, ooh. <laughs> just to indicate that we we want looking to uh, to look at seven thousand nine hundred and twenty reckless and negligent driving operations that we will be conducting, and uh, and of course we also want to look at speed uh, operations, uh, fifteen thousand four hundred and eighty eight of those, and one thousand eight hundred and seventy two operations that we want to conduct for driving under the influence of alcohol, and then also two thousand four hundred and forty eight pedestrian operations that we want to conduct in this year. Uh, can I should. Uh, Chair, just in terms, in terms of uh, special services, we want to ensure 190 compliance inspections. And then in the number of crime prevention operations that we want to do uh, is 4,235 uh, 4, with 5,760 public passenger transport, including taxis, uh, that we want to ensure that there is law enforcement operations that are conducted. Uh, we also want to have 518 law enforcement operations that we are conducting uh, and, and we're targeting uh, learner transport. And then, of course, we want to have 100% of the vehicles that pass through our highways uh, weighed as they go through. Can I have the next slide, please, and see if we can draw this to a close. Just uh, just two things on road safety operations, uh, Chair, uh, road safety awareness programs, 1,244, and then a one state of the art command center establishment. Uh, we are uh, busy with, with, with the establishment of that center. I think you can have the next slide. And, uh, and um, uh, Chair, you had asked for a counting response plan uh, based on um, of the recent uh, threats and the re and the, the unrest that we've had. Uh, Chair, with your guidance, I'm not sure if you'd like us to proceed with this one or you are fine with the uh, operational plan, with the annual performance plan rather, sorry. Uh, you are, uh, can you highlight important sure, yes. issues? Yes, in the in okay. the response plan, please. Sure. HOD. Sure, sure. I will, I, Chair, I would just perhaps. Uh, uh, I did ask that the, the presentation be sent to the committee, and I hope it was it, it, that was done. Uh, I will just focus on the slide because the rest of the slides then just highlight all the work that is being done under each of these pillars. Is that from the lessons that we've learned during the, the evaluation of the response to the recent events, uh, we, uh, we resulted in the SAPS developing a response uh, plan or a contingency plan based on the five pillars. And one of them, of course, is the intelligence gathering, the analysis and the coordination uh, thereof, and then, of course, proactive approach. Um, 
approach to high, uh, which uh, would include high visibility, but also combat approach, rapid response, and uh, hardcore uh, policing. And uh, we did also note the the questions that have come for, from uh, uh, the legislature around the, these issues. But we also have. Um, a pillar on reactive approach uh, where we have detection, tracking um, and uh, prosecution uh, of lead in, uh, investigations, uh, as well as the, to process and uh, case management. And the last of you, obviously, Chair, is the issue of communication and, and liaison. It becomes absolutely important in this process. Chair, uh, I, I'd like to leave it at that. The rest of the presentation really uh, it, uh, just goes into the details of each of these pillars. Thank you, Chair. And I apologize for going over time. Thank you, HOD, for the presentation. Members, we have received the three presentations. Mohali and uh, Merafon did not present. We will be dealing with the questions, this uh, point of clarification based on the three, the Rand West, the Houghton Subs, and the Houghton Department of Community Safety. I'll take hands. With regard to the, uh, the issues which they want to raise, Member Shackleton, I see your hand. Member Khadebe. Is anyone? <coughs> no one. E member Sizagele, Kosi Maloban. And Member Kanyile, I thought they were not there. In that order. And then if there are any stakeholders who want to ask questions related to the presentation of SAPS and also of the office of the MEC, I'll take their hands after the members have asked those questions. Over to you, Member Shackleton. Thank you very much for the opportunity, Chairperson. Uh, I don't have any questions for the municipality, but one for SAPS and two for the department. Uh, to SAPS, it probably doesn't speak directly to the report, what I'm saying, but it informs the report that, let's see, following the violence unrest, there was an article by the Institute for Security Studies that said that SAPS is going to reduce the number of SAPS officers over the next three years. In our last legislature sitting, the Premier of the province, David Makura, said that there are not enough police officers to cater for Gauteng's huge population. Uh, recently, this was also said in our last Community Safety Committee by a former MEC for Community Safety. Uh, therefore, I'd like to ask, essentially, to the presenter from SAPS, do you feel that there are enough SAPS officers in Gauteng? And if there are not, what can we do as this committee to work with you to help put pressure uh, onto SAPS nationally to ensure that we do have enough officers uh, in SAPS to, to cater for Gauteng's ever-expanding population. Uh, then to the, to the Department of Community Safety, I noted in the report uh, CPFs were mentioned. Uh, hopefully, hopefully, I mean, I really hope so. Maybe a month from now or two months from now, I can, I can stop ever saying the same thing in every sentence which goes after the violent unrest. Hopefully that just, we can put that behind us and it doesn't exist anymore. I really hope so. But following on from that, uh, I've had more queries about uh, about neighborhood watches, about how people can, can form that and if that has to strictly be done under, you know, under and within a CPF or if they can do it themselves and so on and so forth. And perhaps the department can just give some clarity regarding that uh, but then maybe you can include neighborhood watches uh, just in the in the report going forward, so we know what what's going on with that. Uh, I know that in the in the Western Cape there is a process where neighborhood watches are formally accredited by the provincial department. And then my very last question, and thank you, Chair, for your indulgence. I, um, I know the time is short. Looking at the at the at the agenda, uh, I do applaud the department's plan to. Uh, build or establish four mobile police stations. But I think all of us are asking where and how. Uh, I think, you know, a lot of us operate in communities where we want mobile police stations. We've even run mobile police stations. And um, essentially, 
I don't know whether we could just get clear, clear criteria. It doesn't mean we have to decide as as this uh, committee, but it would would be nice, you know, maybe when we know they're going to be established or or, or, or when the plan is in place that we do see what that um what that criteria is, so we have some kind of oversight uh, for that, so that we know that the areas that are most in need of mobile police stations in this in this province are in fact getting them. And I would uh, yeah, I mean I would I would certainly love to go as a as a member of this committee uh, to even the furthest reaches of this province when when any of those mobile stations are um, formally launched and opened. And I think I speak for all of the members of this committee in that regard. And uh, lastly, and I should have said this at the, at the very beginning, uh, I warmly welcome the new head of department uh, of, of community safety. And I certainly wish you well. And crime is an issue that transcends the uh, lives and backgrounds of uh, every single one of us. And I wish you the very best. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Member Shilton. Member Hadebe? Uh, Chairperson, mine goes to Run West City, a slide that Community Service Public Safety Annual Operation Plan. Um, main theme was Enforcement DMA. What is the report on the Enforcement DMA? Was the operation successfully? If so, what measures were put in place to access the success of the operation? If not, what were the challenges? Uh, do they know whether the community understand this by laws uh, on that operation? And then the second one is the main theme of August 2021 Women's Month, Operation Basadi. While this is commendable, it, it did, it did, however, leave a bitter taste to see our women in uniform deployed on Women's Day on the 9 August, in particular for this operation. It could have been more appealing to have encouraged women in uniform to rather serve in shelters of victims of GBV, charity organization, and motherless home. This operation could have made even better impact had it been aimed at allowing our women in uniform to run charitable programs in areas outside of their normal day-to-day -day duties to educate our communities about bylaws, road safety, and have road show on learner transport rules and regulation, especially in the uh, week of COVID-19. We have seen several learners using learners transports getting infected with COVID-19 because transport drivers do not necessarily ensure to attire to COVID-19 regulation. This will have been impact full campaign by our, by our female law enforcement. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Member Khadeva. Member, Sisa Gail and Malaba. We bring you your gym clothes. I'm not Don't you have to be there? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I have an item. Audible. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Um, Chair, uh, on, uh, on SAPS, Chair, let me just raise a few uh, issues, and some of them have been covered by uh, the, the two members, although not directly. Um, Chair, the issue of, of the first one that I want to raise is the issue of the confusion that is there regarding the so-called uh, members in blue and the normal or the already popular uh, community patrollers. Um, 
uh, of course, acknowledging the good work that community patrollers have been involved in. And now something called Community Blue have been, um, have been introduced and certain resources have been uh, provided. But not all police stations have been given uh, those resources and not all police stations, the community in blue have been established. And, it, and for those that there is community in blue as well as uh, patrollers, it creates a lot of confusion. Uh, between uh, the, the 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 structures that are there on on the ground, and I think it is important to check with the with the department with the uh, with SAPS on how do they then address the issue of that confusion that have been created by the establishment of of say number two chair is the issue of GBV. We seem not to be really winning on the war against um, uh, GBV in, 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 in our province. And the reason why I'm saying this is because, you know, the figures that we are given or when reports have been reported, given about the fight against GBV, we're not given the, the exact number of where we were when two, three years ago and where we are today. Uh, uh, and maybe it will be proper that in future we get a, 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 an information about that because it, you know GBV is one thing that can be negotiated and it's something that you need to be dealt with and 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 and, and we we are dealt with and the fight should actually be be won. And the other issue chair that I want to raise is working with other partners. I know that in terms of Operation Ukaimula, there's been a lot of good work that has been done. Uh, jointly by uh, all law enforcement, but uh, I don't think we are getting sufficient information on the successes. You know, remember when it was started, the initial we were targeting, uh, or we wanted to eradicate or reduce the numbers of um, of of wanted criminals, particularly criminals when they were involved in serious uh, in serious crimes. And we are seeing, we are beginning to lose the focus uh, that we are now being too general. It's roadblocks for the sake of roadblocks, and 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 that's it. We are no longer getting the feedback of how far are we in terms of getting the good outcomes that were intended in terms of addressing the challenges that were there. Uh, uh, hence, the operation Ukai Mulau was actually. Uh, uh, established. The other issue, Chair, I thought we were going to uh, go deeper in terms of addressing the number of resources, particularly human resource, vis-a-vis -vis the challenges that we have in terms of um, of this thing, what you call this, in terms of COVID. Remember, we have not been able to um, to take uh, to to actually have an intake of police officers in terms of in terms of, of making sure that we are uh, we are we 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 increase the number or we deal with the challenge of those that uh, of natural attrition or those that are resigning etc so we i actually want to know are we going to at some point as saps going to look at visual training where uh, is a, i know fiscal training is very important for, for making sure that we, for intakes, uh, in making sure that the kind of police that we bring into the system are very fit. But I'm saying in terms of theory, are we going to look at the possibility of starting to train our officers uh, visually and then uh, later, whilst we still have this challenge of COVID, and then at some point we'll then revert, we'll then then have physical training of new police officers because we are, we are actually, in terms of the numbers, we are having serious challenges. Uh, uh, in terms of numbers, we are having serious challenges in 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 in, in 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 making sure that we replace those that have actually uh, uh, left the left the, the left the the service. Uh, yeah, so I'm actually asking the question around that, and maybe I will get the an answer. The issue of guns, 
um, you know, I've, you know, I've heard, I, I've, I've listened to the minister talking about the number of trying to reduce the number of, of illegal guns in the hands of criminals. And in, the, in terms of the presentation we're getting now, it seems we are not being really uh, given information of exactly how many guns did we manage to remove from those criminals. And some of those guns are the ones that were used during the, the looting. Hence, our officers were scared to respond to to some of the some some of the some of the incidents that took place in different areas in 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 Gauteng. So I'm also expecting or wanting to know an emphasis around the removal of illegal guns in the hands of of of, of wrong of, of of wrong people. In terms of uh, undocumented uh, uh, migrants in in, in 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 the country, I think. We need to learn as how they, and I'm sure we chair at some point will arrange that you have a discussion with SAPS, um, immigration, home affairs, foreign affairs, for us to come up with a strategy of making sure that those that have managed to pass the borders and managed to to pass other provinces and end up landing in Gauteng, we need to mobilize our, our, our communities in making sure that they are um, registered in Gauteng, their fingerprints are, are taken so that if they are involved in criminal activities, they are traced, but also if it happens that they die, they will also be known who they are. So I think it's a debate that it's not only SAPS that must be involved in, you must also assist SAPS to 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 actually deal with that, uh, with that challenge, you know. In terms of the department, you know, uh, HOD, one of the area, and it's a very key important area in Department of, of, of Community Safety is the issue of the, what are you in the head of now? Um, okay, I'll come to it, Civilian Service Secretariat. The underperformance in that area, it's, you know, I think we can't keep on talking about that unit underperforming year in, year out. And I think it is time and I'm hoping and knowing um, the, the kind of a person you are, ma'am, I know you because of the, your work in terms of GBV issues and how you have dealt with them before. I'm hoping that you bring the same energy in the department in, 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 in addressing uh, areas of underperformance. And I think this unit in particular, need, we need to zoom on, zoom in it and, and make sure that we, we see some form of improvement in terms of, um, of performance. And remember, this is a unit that assists us with um, uh, o o over, oversight, particularly making sure that there is compliance by all law enforcement in terms of quarterly, quarterly reviews instead of them just um, uh, uh, keeping uh, doing, uh, uh, doing nothing. So I'm seeing someone very important and I want to raise something very urgent with him. Uh, I'll come back. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Member Malovan, Member. Thank you, Chair. Uh, earlier on, the uh, municipalities presented their plans and gave an impression that some of them or most of them have been uh, considered or processed or adopted or signed off by the provincial police commissioner. I just want to get a sense from the SAPS Office of the Provincial Commissioner, uh, their capacity to monitor and ensure implementation of the plans that they have signed off. <coughs> and if, they, if that is their responsibility, what is the possibility of them working with this committee to provide us progress in that regard? just not only in progress, but also on impact that these plans are making at that level. So that's the first question. The second one, Chair, uh, is that uh, the, the, if I look, listen, look at the presentation by the Gauteng Department of Community Safety, one of the questions that arises is that I would expect that because they are responsible for the provincial 
safety matters. There should be a way in which their plans and programs speak to or influence the plans and programs of the SAPS in Gauteng. <clears throat> So I, would, I just want to relate it to that. I want just to be to understand if, uh, besides us getting reports that says that there were quarterly review sessions, well, what is the possibility? Is it possible that the Gauteng Department of Community Safety can give us progress on the work that is done, uh, that in which they they collaborate with the SAPS? Uh, 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 so, so in other words, not just that there were meetings. I think the substance and the impact of of the of implementation of those programs. The third one, chair, is that uh, uh, maybe it's related to what I've just asked now. Maybe especially the MEC. Maybe MEC can just help us have an understanding as a committee. Uh, what is the department's capacity? to where there are problems in the deep, in, with the police, uh, partial of resources, uh, uh, yeah, things like those. What is the capacity or the role of the department in ensuring that they deal with such matters uh, so that maybe there's there should be clarity as we move ahead? Uh, the, the last one, Chair, can the department and maybe the police give us progress? It might not be now. If it's, if it's a lot of information, they can submit it in writing. The progress that they are making or not making in strengthening the capacity, their capacity and that of, their capacity and that of the Department of Education on scholar patrols. Uh, I'm saying this because we've had a disturbing report during the week, early this week, about the incident in social movie, and we've had some previously. Uh, we know that there's been this issue that there is a need for us to also look at how patrollers are appointed, vetted, and all those kinds. Of, so I just want to find out what progress there. Maybe let me conclude by saying, Chair, I think you are correct to give the to not really uh, intervene when the HOD was speaking, because I think it was a maiden speech and you don't disturb the maiden speech. Thank you very much. Thanks, Member Kanile. Member Kubas, I saw your hand and it's no longer there. Do you, do you still Thank want to ask? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, yeah, just a quick um, a question for the Premier alluded to 40,000 members that is available in uh, Gauteng. Um, I've got a figure of 26,000 and something member, members. If uh, the MEC can maybe just clear that up, but that's just a question for clarity. I've got no further other questions, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Member Kobas. Uh, can I hand over to both the MEC? Uh, I think, MEC, you are not here when we are saying that not all the questions should be answered today, and some of them, they need to be sent to our department in, in our office, in the committee office, so that we get them officially in black and white. I know that if I didn't explain that, you might be speaking for more than 30 minutes. I'm pulling your leg, MEC. I will start first with the Marafin, two minutes. Then, is it Marafin? Rent West. Rent West, MMC JJ, two minutes, and the rest you will respond officially. MMC is JJ. If MMC is not here, is it Prince? 
Who want to respond? Uh, can we jump? Uh, we start with subs. We are giving you subs, Major General from Potter. Only three minutes, Major. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Honorable Chair, we know that uh, as the law enforcement agencies, we are a shoulder to carry on and the safety of our communities is in our hands. Uh, we have noted uh, questions asked by the honorable members. Some of the questions will be responded uh, formally in writing, uh, Chair. Uh, we noted uh, 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 other few um, concerns uh, with regard to the police capacity, Chair. Compensation budget is the national competency. Yes, uh, we do have insufficient uh, members due to uh, service termination, but it is uh, dependent on the budget allocation as a uh, chair. That's the reason why we rely also on integrated approach uh, to capacitate uh, the police. And we really uh, thank uh, other uh, law enforcement agencies for their assistance. And with regard to uh, the issue of uh, the figures, uh, with regard to uh, the successes, uh, the successes are being uh, shared with other uh, law enforcement agencies during the JOCOM meetings and uh, uh, prof joints. But in this regard, uh, we need, yes, uh, to uh, announce our successes. We'll ensure that a formal report is submitted to the office uh, where we uh, mention our successes. And the issue of a uh, uh, shortage of police, yes, like we mentioned previously, uh, uh, I want to talk about the issue of the visual uh, training. Uh, we appreciate, uh, you know, the, the concern, and we took note of the concern, and we'll also ensure that we discuss that with head office so that they can also uh, be on board with regard to that, and it can be of assistance to, uh, to, 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 to our members. And uh, the issue of uh, firearms, uh, also the results in terms of the firearms, when we presented our plan, our mandate was to discuss only the plan, not uh, the results. But in terms of the results, we'll ensure that we submit our results also uh, with regard to how many firearms were recovered, and it will be a formal report, uh, uh, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Major General. In your response, please include the issue of Chairperson. the pro, uh, the issue. Uh, Major General, it's, in the response which you are going to send to the committee, could you please include the issue of the station commander of uh, Orange Farm, the progress so that Chairperson. we should be able to know? Hello? I will do so, Chair. It's me. I'm sorry to interrupt you and so on. I'm not feeling well, Chair, and I am going to exit the meeting soon, but I've sent you an SMS for a question that when the time comes, please ask it for me. It's, it's, it's directed to the commissioner and in dotted lines to the MEC, if not the HOT. Thanks, HOT. For the for your presentation, your maiden speech, but yeah, chair, it's it's that issue that is direct. Can you see? Your, we want to see your face, please. It's me, no chair. The face you can't see. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yes. Oh. Yeah, I'm not okay. feeling well. I just wanted to to request that I I I sponsor this issue, and when the time comes, because I don't want to interrupt your sequence, eh? So please ask for me the, the, the question to the provincial commissioner about the, the the station commander of Orange Farm, the conduct and the complaints, and why she's untouchable, why we she just doesn't respect us as a committee. So MEC might not necessarily be answering, but at least she's going to hear now the problems we encounter. Just that, Chair, sorry to disturb your meeting, but I, I'm quite right, so I might exit your meeting, and I needed this to be spoken about. 
Thank you, Chip. Thank you, Stanley, and for indulging me. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Member. I was raising it that in the response, we are requesting, when they are going to write to us, we are requesting that they should respond to the issue of the station commander of Orange Farm uh, so that we should be able to know what is happening and we take it further as a committee because the matter was sent to the provincial commissioner and during the presentation of the stats, the response which we got as a, as a committee was not convincing. So, and then the other thing, uh, Major General Rampota, in the response which we are going to receive as a committee, uh, please, can you share with us the plan to avoid future unrest outside, even outside, so that we should be able to know. I know that some of the plans, they are very confidential, but highlight those that they are, we, we should be aware of it. Then I'll hand over to the MEC. MEC, I'm going to give you only five minutes to respond to the issues which were raised to the department. MEC, over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Five minutes, I think it's even too much. Uh, starting with the issue of the community in blue chair, what we'll do, we'll send you a thorough uh, concept document uh, in relation to that. Of course, they, as part of integrated law enforcement, that is why the idea of having community in blue, in fact, they, that idea comes from national, but of course, because the only people that will be available will be community patrollers within communities. So we've uh, urged uh, the, uh, the SAPS to not just come and want to select. They'll work through the CPFs and CPFs will assist them in seconding uh, men and women who will be part and parcel of the community in blue. In actual fact, we look forward to making all our patrollers community in blue so that then we only remain with uh, patrollers that actually deal with uh, special projects like your Seabangena crew, like your school safety uh, patrollers and all those things. But we intend to take Almal, food steward, to be part and parcel of the community in blue. So basically, that's the uniform you now be seeing in future of of men of community in blue. And Major General Ramporter is in here. PC, uh, as he's on sick leave, he did mandate Brigadier Jones to start procuring those reflector jackets. So that then it's not selected stations that have those uh, reflector jackets, but all stations now they must be able to uh, wear those uh, reflectors and uh, as part and parcel of them uh, being in community in blue. On the issue of neighborhood watches, in Gauteng, the, how we have recognized them, Chairperson, is that they must register through the CPFs. Where people will just wake up in the morning and decide to establish neighborhood watches or any uh, vigilante groups and claim that they are protecting communities. People must be properly registered. The station must know those people who come together and say they want to help in protecting uh, their communities. And the best way to do that is to register through your uh, CPF. So that then CPF is part and parcel of those stakeholders that they have, and they know that in Hercules, for example, there is no community patrollers, but there are neighborhood watches. So meaning those neighborhood watches have registered with Hercules as part of them, knowing that they are the ones that are available on the ground in assisting to protect and safeguard uh, communities. So it becomes important to coordinate all those things, Jefferson, so that then people, we don't want a Phoenix situation where people have killed others and no one is accountable, except police now they are being made to account of why a, a certain neighborhood watch or certain uh, members of the community actually kill people under the auspices that they actually uh, protecting their communities. So no sooner we start working together, Member Shackleton, tell your people, they must register through the CPFs. And CPFs, there's no gatekeeping. They recognize them. They make sure that even some of them, they are vetted. We don't want criminals hijacking some of these uh, uh, structures, but we want on honest and honorable men and women who are determined in making sure that our communities are actually uh, safer. On the issue of mobile police stations, the police will be the ones that will be de uh, deploying according to the needs and priorities of certain communities. You find certain communities like what busy having new areas that are actually mushrooming, they, they are far from police stations. So that's when they actually will play in that role of ensuring that uh, they assist 
in uh, uh, establishing uh, or being available. And mobile, it means it is moving. Today, you may find it in 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 Tomorrow, you may find it a uh, 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 The other time, you may find it in other areas. So it will move. It is not stationed in one place. So coming to open those mobile units because they'll actually be able to be uh, deployed. And they'll also be uh, uh, deployed in those roadblocks where services are needed and cases have to be opened immediately. These uh, roadblocks are important, Jefferson, because they assist in, in stop and searches. And they're able to uh, 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 identify some of the wrong things that are, are, are happening there. I'm not sure if Mayor General Ramporta uh, responded on the plans that have been signed off uh, by PC, but almost all municipalities through their prof joints and the GLEAF, their uh, plans are actually uh, uh, um, uh, uh, signed off by uh, PC. Remember, even the act that recognizes MPDs is that their plans must actually be signed off by P uh, PC. We note the comment that uh, our provincial secretariat is underperforming. We intend to employ uh, the, uh, the, remember our chief director passed away last year. That's why Taxita now has to double up between research and those, but we intend to make sure that we have our chief director in place before the end of the year. That way uh, we'll be able to, 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 to deal with that. On the issue of how we influence uh, SAPS on their uh, 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 resources, remember honorable member uh, uh, Sotaile, under section 206 subsection, is it 3F? I, I'm, I, I'm subject to correction. I don't have my constitution with it. It, it indicates, Chair, that as the province, it's our responsibility to engage the minister responsible in identifying needs and priorities of safety for our province. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not uh, quoting it word by word, but it's there in the constitution. So we use that uh, uh, clause, Chair, to be able to engage the minister in also tackling some of these challenges. And luckily, through these engagements that you also does come and have in the communities, uh, issues of resources, whether it's cars and police, unfortunately police, because they could not recruit in the past a year due to COVID, it means we may not be able to have a new a police, police personnel coming uh, 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 into our province. But uh, I don't know how they're going to sort it out, but we'll continue working. That's why the idea of uh, of, of increasing the community in blue, so that then they're part and parcel of the force uh, multiplier. On strengthening the work with education, especially on the school patrollers, uh, Chair, uh, remember it's us who second them to Department of Education. So uh, we will make sure that we strengthen. It is strengthened already. The difference is that we deploy the as per their request, and then it's them that identify schools where those uh, uh, scholar patrollers, uh, school patrollers are actually needed. And accordingly, so they are paid by GDE. They're not paid by us. So ours is just to get update reports and making sure that they are kitted in making sure that they are more visible and uh, actually uh, doing work as they are. I'll end there for now, Chair. Thank you very much. Thanks, MEC, for the response together with the Major General. Uh, honorable members, staff, we are not going to take lunch. We are checking. We are saying that we need to do a way forward and a vote of thanks so that when we we are done, we go to lunch. I know that those that uh, they have locked at home, they've already had their lunch. It's, the, it's only us who are... No, no we have not finished our lunch. We're waiting for you to call for lunch. Okay. Can uh, honorable members, uh, can I give the way forward on the program of today? First of all, the committee welcome all the presentation made by the various stakeholders on their safety plans. The committee is primarily concerned with the poor enforcement of bylaws, especially within the Johannesburg area, as epitomized by the land invasion and illegal trading. The committee knows with the concern that the lack of adequate resources experienced by various metro police department, as well as Mfuleni and the Western local municipalities. The committee commend an expression of, by, by Mfuleni local municipality that it has a community safety forum 
plan, but concerned that there are no resources to advance the plan. The committee will therefore request that all the other stakeholders should provide their community safety plans to the committee by the 3rd of September 2021. This is primarily important, noting that the communi community safety plan forum, when were, when well, when will carried out can yield the desired state of the safer community and thus respond to the National Development Plan Vision 2030. The committee welcomes the Ekurulian municipality localized version of the operation Okae Molao and will recommend that other municipalities to consider doing the same in their respective jurisdiction. The committee welcomed the plan by the Swanee of installing CCTV cameras at hotspots. It can be hoped that this will be effective in deterring the perpetration of crime within the area. The committee notes with concern the challenge of illegal mining and cable theft in the West End and recommend that there should be a concerted effort by various law enforcement agencies to address these challenges. The committee therefore requests the department to submit plans to address these challenges through GLEAF by the 31st of September 2021. Furthermore, the department is concerned with the aging fleet within the West Rand and recommend that the relevant author authorities to address challenges related to the shortage of vehicle, turnaround time of vehicle requires repair and maintenance to ensure that policing efforts are not compromised and to avoid putting the lives of officials in a danger by using vehicles that are not fit to be on the road. <clears throat> For all the municipalities that did not submit their presentation, the committee requests that this be submitted to the committee by the 18th August 2021. The committee will continue to monitor the implementation of this plan on a quarterly basis to ensure that the safety of the people of Gauteng is realized. Therefore, the committee also acknowledge the presentation of the department as it has already considered during budget and the state that the committee will monitor the implementation of the quota on quarterly basis. Then the committee further note that the non-performance of the civilian secretariat will be monitored closely. And lastly, we are requesting as a way forward what we have requested from the Office of the 18th Provincial Commissioner to be submitted as requested. That's the way forward for the engagement with all our stakeholders. Then we will move to Honorable Kanyule. Oh, let me see. Yes, I didn't see it. Yes, I did raise my hand. I want to go back. Okay, over to you, MEC. On that, uh, was it a sentence or paragraph on Okaimalao where the committee is it noting or is recommending that uh, the various municipalities must have their Okaimalaos? Chair, this is a provincial uh, operation but gets decentralized through the districts. So meaning the five uh, regions are called districts. So municipalities can have their own because they plan together with SAPS at district level, Chair. That's what I wanted to correct that English. Thank you very much. Okay, let me see. <coughs> Sure. 
Nkosi? Thank you, thank you, Chair. I think in line with that correction, uh, it's supposed to be saying Operation Kurula for Ego related, not oh, Operation Oh, okay. Operation All right. Thank you, Okay, Chair. thanks. Thanks. Is it Operation Kugula? Operation Kurula. Tugula. Kurula. Kurula. Eh. Yes. Yes. All right, thank you. The committee welcome the e the Ikorlen localized version of the Operation Kurula. Correct, sir. All right. Yes. Any other correction or any other input? Can we move if there is no any other correction or input? We are requesting Member Kanyile to do a vote of thanks for us. Thanks, Member Shabit uh, Kanyile. Thank you very much, Chair, for the opportunity you're giving to me. Let me, as, as requested, thank all the participants to the meeting, particularly those who took their time to prepare the presentations that were made to the committee. Obviously, like you indicated, Chair, uh, we will have to follow up with, with the reports that we didn't receive. I think the importance of this is the fact that we want to take seriously the issue of capacity to ensure cooperative governance. Uh, and if you remember well, cooperative governance uh, is not just about anything but uh, ability to support uh, where, where, where is other, other spheres of, of government where is necessary. So we would like to thank you, and it should be our commitment as this committee that will ensure that these things are realized. Lastly, obviously, we'd like to thank uh, those who are also, who took their time to attend virtually, because uh, we realize that in some cases, there's still a lot of training we have to undertake chair, because uh, some of the videos we saw when people were showing us uh, we could only see the hair, but it's fine. We'll deal with those things. But it's good that uh, we, training should, should be done in this regard. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, and the members who took time to come to the meeting, drive their cars, uh, and spend time with us here, and the support staff, thank you very much. Thanks. The meeting is adjourned. We can go online and go home. Thank you. Uh, goodbye, Chair. How are you, Chair? Goodbye, Chair. I don't know how you responded. You're invited for lunch. You're invited for lunch. Fly, fly, come. Yes, yes. If I can go to lunch, I'll be telling you. Thank you, Chair. Hi, 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 hi. Bye, bye. Thank you. They are saying they are missing you, MC. Hey, 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 hey. Jovito, Jovito, you'll see me soon. Salute, salute. Tchau, vídeo.